Stimulating late night sports conversation for people who know that just trying to find someone sober to talk to at this time of night is like trying to find a pig on the moon. In the early morning, No rules news debate from around the world and around the bend. Uh, the two mics. Fly more lager. On Talk Sport. Yeah. That, I'm afraid, uh, is the sound of Leicester City Shocking. fans uh, banging it up in Madrid uh, after they lost 1-0 to Atletico Madrid. Right, yeah. police out there with batons, charging them, you know, weights, stripped to the waist, chucking stuff all over the, uh, uh, the, the yeah. square. Absolutely horrendous. Just ghastly behaviour. And we don't need it anymore in this country of ours. And we don't need it in Europe. And we don't need it in football, do we? No, it's absolutely disgraceful. And contrast that with what happened um, in that city where last night... Fans of the visiting team, mm. who obviously didn't see a game last night, it was called off because of this mysterious attack, mm. right? Were then housed in the in the homes of the Dortmund fans. You're talking about Dortmund, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I'm... a slightly different city, but yeah. I mean, Oliver Holt says last yeah. night Dortmund fans sharing their homes with Monaco fans tonight. Leicester fans shouting Gibraltar yes. towers makes you despair. Yes, and it does make you. Yeah, despair. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, ab- I mean, you know, I don't care whether Leicester City fans will say, "Oh, there's always a small minority that yeah. do it." You know, there shouldn't be a small minority. I'll tell you what's interesting uh, is that Daniel uh, has sent us a tweet, and he's a Leicester City um, a season ticket yes. holder, right? And he says, "I think Leicester City selection process has embarrassed us all." Fight and chance that makes you despair. It shows the quality our club give tickets to. What does, he mean, to. what does he mean, selection process? Well, I think he means the selection process of the, the tickets that they give to fans who are travelling. Perhaps yeah. is that is what he's getting at. Because, I, I don't uh, know what he's getting at because surely only the you know the best of the fans and the and the most enthusiastic and most fervent would go. Does no, that but, mean that they're well, hooligans? The, well, the belief is that fifteen thousand Leicester fans went to yeah. Madrid. Right? They yeah. only had I think somewhere between three and four thousand. That's tickets, right. Yeah. So an awful lot of people would have gone without being able to have tickets to the just to cause game. trouble, presumably. But however. However, mm. I mean, they may have travelled, and I'm not saying that they have definitely mm. travelled under mm. the auspices of mm. official Leicester travel plans. Yep. But, you know, they would have been known, presumably, to Leicester City. Uh, otherwise, yeah. you know, they wouldn't yeah. just be travelling there under yeah. their own steam, would they? Well, I don't know. I mean, that, that's uh, police intelligence and all that kind of stuff. And let's face it, Leicester have never been a high-profile football club before, no. certainly not in European terms. No. So anybody that they were taking would have taken Europe by surprise. Yeah. But I tell you, Grimm, it's so disgusting. I mean, you know, the, the, the clubs who go into Europe regularly now, you know, the Arsenal's and the Chelsea's and, and the Manchester City's and United's, they know how to handle these things because they've been doing it for so long. Yeah. So if Leicester, as a club, haven't prepared themselves properly for the later stages of the Champions League and the hooligan element that m- may exist amongst their fans, yeah. they're falling down on the job. Uh, particularly if it means that there are people who are sort of attaching themselves to yeah. Leicester who are not proper Leicester fans. But that's not the se- sense that I'm getting from, from no, twi- Twitter. neither am I. Uh, my, my sense is that these people have gone for a jolly. They're not very nice people. They're yeah. stripped to the waist. They're all, they're all uh, Leicester tattoos. I mean, they're not people who are not associated with no. Leicester. No, and they're ma- and they're making a mockery yeah. of of European football and, and and the whole idea of the Champions League. And it's such a shame because Leicester put in such a credible performance that uh, it well, should be did. a night of great glory for yeah, Leicester. They did. I did incidentally predict one nil. You did indeed. Yeah. In fact, I'm more than happy. Well, well you're uh, happy to, to accept that I did. Of course you did. Well, yeah. listen, when you do something and I agree that you did it yeah. and you remember it correctly, yeah. I will be more than happy oh. to give you a yes. You Sorry, did that was me well. just collapsing on the floor well, with shock. Well, I, well, you don't have to. I've always been very, very honourable in uh. congratulations. You whenever you get something right, yeah. it just doesn't happen very often. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's when a, you, that's what you so say. when you claim that you tipped Justin Rose to win the uh, yes. the, the Masters, which yeah. you didn't, then I criticise you. I'm sorry, and then but... I play you the tape which proves that you didn't say that. No, I did. It was, you know, your your condemnation of it was contradicted by the tape uh, no. and, and the conversation <laughs> between me and Bob. It was not. Uh, yeah, I mean, Bob not. and I know each other very well. We know our own language, and mm. Bob will tell you I tipped Justin Rose. Okay, right. full stop. Now, would you be willing to congratulate me for something? Uh, depends what it is. Okay, well, I'm going to make an announcement. The Jaguar F Pace has been named the world car of the year. Yes. Hurrah! Guess who's got one? Oh, no, but you didn't manufacture the car. <laughs> no, you but did, I chose it. You had nothing it. to do with no, it. No, but I chose it, right? Yeah. And I chose it at mm. such a time. Yes. And we're talking seven months ago. Yes. Before anybody realised how good it was. Yeah, that was just a mistake. No. You were looking for a 4x4. Four that's four. No, not a mistake. You wanted actually no. a different car. I can that's reveal rubbish. this now. No, no. Seeing as you're, no, seeing as you're getting big-headed see, see about it. look how upset you are. Oh, no, no, because no. Because my car no. is the car of the year, no. and yours wasn't even the car of the year when it was made no. about four years ago. No, no, I'm not disputing anything about that. What I'm saying is, the truth of the matter is, you only got this car by accident. No, you I wanted didn't. a Land Rover. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I did not want yes, a Land Rover. Yes, you did. They're made by the same company. Listen to me, and I'll tell you why I didn't want a Land Rover. I didn't want a Land Rover because I'd had a Land Rover, and the Land Rover had broken down, and I had to put 
put a new gearbox in it yeah. at a very yeah. extreme cost. Yeah. So I, the last car I wanted was a Land Rover. I know what you wanted. I wanted a Jaguar F Pace. No, you didn't. You wanted a Jeep. No, I didn't. You definitely. You went and looked no, at the Jeep and then did. didn't like the shape. I did. No, I went. Did and looked, you? I went and looked at a Jeep. There I didn't you like, go. But I didn't. Woo woo woo. Why does yeah. that make you whoop? Well, well because, because I, I've you've got, got to the right. I've got to the bottom no. of it. You've only got no. a, an F space or whatever it's called F space. by, by uh, mistake. <laughs> huh? No, I I went to drive a jeep because I wanted to see what it was like. Yeah. When I drove it, I didn't like it, yeah. so I didn't buy it. Yeah. I like the F space, and I'm a trendsetter, and I want you to admit that. Trendsetter? Yeah. No way. Yes, no way. The only thing you'd set trends on. Your are, old jalopy is, is an uh, embarrassment, right? I'm, in, I'm actually is... embarrassed to park my car next to yours outside. Well, don't, I'm beca- because I'm a little bit embarrassed to park my car next to yours. Mine is a sleek two-door old fastback, old, three and, old, and a half litre, 15-month-old... Old. 15 month old, old supercar, okay? Supercar. Tell Give you what, mate, if we were on the a. The super about your car is it going to the supermarket? If we were on an airport runway. Um... I've, told, I've offered you the chance to race me, right? Oh, I could and... easy, easily be. Well, well, let's do it. You've got a tiny little engine. Well, I have, it doesn't matter, I've got a big, no. big accelerator. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's illegal to do it on the roads, and I wouldn't. No, I told I, you I... we'd go to Silverstone to do it. We had that guy on when we were talking about the Grand Prix in Australia. Yeah, well, uh, if we've got time again, and space, away, but I'm not sure you've, we have. You've run away from the penalty shootout, you've run away from the guy golf tournament, you've run away from the table tennis tournament, you've run away now from the race with the two cars. So, I mean, I don't know what else I have to do no. to prove that you are no, not uh, the one man here with a great big yellow streak down the middle of your back. <laughs> How dare you. That's what you got. Anyway, you'll be laughing on the side of your face when my new car arrives. Well, when's your new car arriving? I'm not getting into that. Are you getting a new car because the one you've got now is so crappy? No, 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 not so. <laughs> no, no. It's just a natural development. You Why know. are you replacing the supercar then? Uh, only because of the... It's rubbish. No, no, uh, no, no. It's rubbish. No. It's I, old. I change my cars every two years. Do you? Yes. Yeah, why? And, well, because I like to. worn out the tyres. No, not at all. You wear out the tyres. No, not at all, yeah. not at all. Anyway, tell us about the newly upholstered chair. Well, it's why brilliant. Why is there not a picture of it? Um, well, because last time I put a picture out of the uh, damaged chair... I was, you know, subjected to a level of um, disrespect, which I found rather unpalatable and unpleasant. Disrespect so I, from whom? Well, from people saying, you know, look at your knackered old chair. Well, of course it was oh, knackered. No. There was a spring uh, well, sticking no, through the bottom. It wasn't so there much, isn't now. No, they weren't making fun of the chair. They were making fun of the environs of the chair. No, no. Notably, the guy who put a tweet out today uh, yeah. saying that uh, you were trying to recreate the pub that time forgot. No. With an Everton uh, rug... Some other kind of horrendous rug and some uh, some rather ghastly furnishings. You're right. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> no, there's uh, there's um, uh, an air conditioning problem in this um, is studio again. Yeah, I feel fine. Yeah, well, it, absolutely. It was fine. far too hot when we came. I don't know. People can work in that sort of temperature. Well, some people need to have uh, the, the no, heat to keep w- them. Sort people of who stimulated. work in in sort of sauna, you know, what are they called? Sauna baths, sauna uh, saunas, saunas. Saunas, yeah, in, in, in sauna I type mean, conditions. Some people call it a sauna bath, but yeah. not really anymore. Sauna type conditions. Yeah. I, I don't know how they do it because, you know, it's, uh, it fogs your brain. But anyway, there you go. Yeah. Maybe that's obvious. I think there's yeah. a guy who's a bit confused. Graham, yes. Graham in Bath. Right? Yes. says, praise for Porky. He is so correct. His finger yes. is on the pulse again. Dortmund fans house the mm. Monaco fans mm. and Leicester thugs are shaming British football. Yes. What kind of country are we living in now? Yeah. And why is everyone so angry? Well, that's all very well, Graham, but it's actually all the stuff that it's, I said. Do you know what? It's not the people who are angry, Graham. It's that we still have 1% or 2% at the very bottom of our society. The underclass. The, the, the underclass, the underbelly, the filth and... Um, what's that word called when uh, the derritus is floating around? Detritus, yeah. Detritus, the yeah. detritus floating around on society. Yeah. And they're still there. The scum floats to the top Yeah, sometimes. the scum floats to the top. And they're still there, believe it or not. And, they, mm. they, you know, some of them still see football as a way for them to express their ignorance, their anger, their prejudice, their... Uh, sheer damn uh, unpleasantness as human beings. Yeah. They, they they choose the environment of football and with the football crowds where you can be a big man with all your mates, but in fact you're a little man, you're a coward, mm. and they still see that as a as a, a forum for you know their uh, pitiful lifestyle. Here's one from uh, VHP. It says, well done, Mike, for highlighting this English disease. Throw exactly. them out of the competition, they'll be hammered in the second leg. Well, do you well, know, be so I, mean, I think they will be hammered in the second leg, and I don't want to no, see I them. Don't. I don't want to see them travelling mm. in Europe if no. that's the way they're going to behave. I think no. it's absolutely disgraceful. I totally agree. How about this from um, mm-hmm. Revenger? He says, as soon as MG mm. announces something quite impressive, yes. Porky immediately starts to devalue it and make excuses. No. Just say, well done. No, not at all. Mm. Not at all. If I think something's worthy of praise, then I give it a, really? a great deal of praise. Right. Now, um, Sean says, these two clowns on TalkSport are stealing a living, bickering about their cars at 1am like little kids. Yeah. Ten minutes 
of my life wasted. Is that really Sean, right? I think that you've actually wasted an awful lot of your life, to be honest. Yeah, I do. And I can tell by the way you've written that tweet uh, yeah. that you are slightly bitter and twisted. So not, get over it. Not only that, but we've you know we've actually examined you know the crucial uh, story <laughs> issue tonight, which yeah. is the way that the fans have uh, behaved. And next up, by the way, we're going to examine why footballers yeah. suddenly believe that the rules of society, mm. when it comes to resisting terrorism, do not apply to them in right. the way it applies to everybody else. Exactly right. Getting on to that next. Yes, we are the two mics. This is Talk Sport. I'm going slightly mad. I'm going slightly mad. It finally happened. Happened. Finally happened. Now, we've got a lot of uh, uh, tweets and texts coming in on the subject of cars. We've got something much more serious to talk about, so we'll get back to the cars Mm. a little bit later on. Mm. Mm. Uh, Gaz says this. Nice to hear you both slammed Leicester fans. Mark Saggers blamed the police Mm. and random travelling individuals, but there's no (laughs) excuse for it. (laughs) Well, the trouble is, you see, there is a certain uh, corner, and I'm rather pleased to see Oliver Holt Mm. actually attacking them, because there is a corner of what you would call uh, sports reporting. Which just goes, oh, well, you know, there's always a few small individuals that do this kind of thing. No, it should be wiped out, yeah. it should be done away with, it should be outlawed, and it should not be tolerated. I mean, by in... even a small number of, of fans, it yes. should not be allowed to happen. In fairness, most of my colleagues in Fleet Street, most of your colleagues in Fleet Street, are pretty damning when it comes to um, judging. Well... The fans no, who go abroad well, and disgrace this country. Well, no, but, no well, they mostly are. They mostly lot, are. No, but a lot of what you would call low-level stuff, and yeah. this might be regarded as low-level stuff because of the fact that, um, you know, nobody's really getting hurt, nobody's really getting arrested, but there are clashes yeah. going on, and they will still be going on through the night. But it's if you're in that town, for Ooh. example, if you're in Madrid right now with your kids on Easter holidays, yes. it is a very unpleasant place of to be. Of course it is. And it is a very unpleasant thing to witness, mm. and, it's, and it's horrible, and it shouldn't be happening. And I think an awful lot of sports reporting that is done in this country country actually overlooks it because they well, go unless it's a massive thing yeah. they don't they don't bother to be honest i don't agree with that i th- i think that people like uh, you know uh, ollie holt and henry winter and people like that do honestly uh, well, let's have a look l- and look see in the papers how much of it yeah. is being covered yeah I, now, bet you, I bet you not very much of it is uh, well it depends how uh, late it came in didn't it get into the first edition of the papers no, that we've got no because the video that i've seen on yeah. twitter is shot during the day yeah okay, okay? so right. it was shot before it got dark right that's great you have a look through the papers and look for that i want to talk about whether footballers think they are part of society and whether yeah. or whether they deserve special rules. Now, the reason I uh, say this is because I saw the Dortmund manager after the game and he was clearly saying that, you know, it was shocking to have to play the game 24 hours after the original postponement. Yeah. Except well, he, was that being, they, he was being critical of UEFA as well, wasn't he, specifically? Yeah, but they went through a, um, an arrangement last night where both sides agreed to play the game again tonight because of so many fans were in town. Yeah. And because, you know, the, the tie had to be played for the competition to be able to progress. Now, Rio Ferdinand, who I saw on the TV tonight, a very eminent, obviously, ex-England, ex-Manchester United footballer, man decorated with honours, yeah. said that he thought that it was wrong for them to be made to play the game afterwards. Now, all I would say to Mr Ferdinand... Uh, and to others who who feel that the footballers deserved a special case for more postponement, is that the one thing we always say in reply to terrorist attacks, and this is a very strange attack, we're not quite sure it's to still, what, there are to still what a level... Lot of, yeah, there's still a lot of questions. Yeah, that e- answered, exa- right. Exactly, to what level or to what extent it was, it was a terrorist attack. But the one thing we say is they are out there to try and destroy our way of life. We must not let them disrupt our way of life. We must get on with it. Well, the best way to get on with it is to play the game as soon as possibly afterwards. You've had to postpone it because of the incident that took place last night. Yeah. So, you know, the policeman who worked on Westminster Bridge when their colleague was murdered, the people in Sweden, you know, who saw friends attacked in, 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 a, in a lorry incident, mm. and, and people historically in Germany and, and France well, who've forget, suffered have, have to get on with life, yeah. and I'm afraid well, so do footballers. Yeah, well, what I was going to say to you in, in, in sort of support of what you're yes. saying is that on Westminster Bridge, where there were so many terrible things that happened mm. that afternoon, mm. what, two weeks ago, yes. less than 24 hours later, Westminster Bridge was open again yeah. to pedestrians, to traffic, Yes. And to the police and everybody else that was in London. And there were loads of people who, like us, and I'm not trying to, um, you know, heap praise on us, who said, tomorrow morning I'm going to walk over Westminster Bridge. Yeah. That's the defiance against terrorism. Yeah. 
the, you, you don't defy terrorism by saying, oh, I think we'll have another two or three days off because, you know, we're a little bit shaken off although by some the people, terrorism. Although some people were slightly critical of people like Philip Schofield, who was one yeah. of the first people to say, I'm going to go out and walk across Westminster yes, Bridge. Yes, that's right, yeah. And they were slightly disingenuous to say, hmm. oh, well, uh, that's going to make a big difference, Phil, isn't it? So yeah. you're going to, you know, put your big hands up against terrorism by walking across Westminster Bridge. Yeah, you know, exactly, yeah. Big wow, as yeah. it were. But, I mean, a lot of the reasons why people are quite sort of, um, shall we say, sympathetic, I mm. think, to the footballers is yeah. the interview... Uh, that was shown and is around on Twitter mm. uh, with Nuri Sahin, uh, who is a Dortmund player, but yep. he's from Turkey originally. Yep. And he's clearly very upset about what happened the night before. And I think that mm. one of the one of the difficulties for us, I suppose, yes. uh, is because we're not seeing what they saw, maybe, or we're not being told yes. how serious this incident actually was for yes. one reason or another. Um, you know, they're seeing it in a much more serious way than we were. Because mm. they, they're saying, I mean, this guy's being being interviewed after the game, more or less talking about how he got home to see his wife and mm. his child mm. and realised how lucky he was to be alive. Yeah, uh, I accept all that, but you still have to get on with it. You know, they're not soldiers, they're not in battle, they don't have to say, well, this is what I signed up for, but they signed up as footballers who are leading lights in our society and they have to lead from the front. And I, I accept everything you've just said, but terrorism is what tests us, It what tests our way of life, mm. our, the, the peacefulness we've lived in since the end of the Second World War is being challenged now. We have to face up to it. And one way to face up to it is to get on with it. And well, I'm afraid that, that, that is a rule across society, which includes football. I agree with that. But, it, I mean, mm. the, only, the only, I would say, um, slight sort of, I suppose, uh, caveat that I would put on it is mm. if the Dortmund manager feels that UEFA were slightly inconsistent, and yeah. I think he's talking about the night before rather than the actual game itself. He seems to be saying that all they got at, at the time yeah. was a text from UEFA saying, are you ready to play? Yes. Meaning, are you ready to play still, despite the fact that your bus has been attacked? Mm, mm. Which is obviously a ridiculous question, because yeah. surely they weren't ready to play. Mm. But yeah, I mean, he can't have it both ways. If they're saying to him, look, yeah. we've now come up with a reason and excuse for you to play tomorrow, yes. then surely that's what happens. Yeah, but if they were that concerned, they simply this morning, in the cold light of day, should have rung up somebody at UEFA and said, look, my players are simply not mentally able to appear on the football pitch night and yeah. made an issue of it. It's no good after the game. And it's a little bit unfair on Monaco, who were incredibly good. Well, I must say, I've seen the highlights of the game, and yeah. Dortmund players do not look particularly out of it. They're no. playing as well as they can play, no. but they were outclassed by the... Uh, uh, by the and by, by the way, bit. please remember, the Monaco team were in the same city where the alleged terrorist incident took place. Yeah, but they weren't on the bus, though. They weren't on the bus, I agree. But, I mean, the point is, what I'm saying is, one of the reasons that the, the Dortmund players are insinuating they didn't want to play is, how did they know it wasn't going to happen again? How did sure. they know there wasn't going to be a repeat of, the, of, of that incident? And yeah. the Monaco players had to put up with exactly the same thing in, I think in, in that know. respect. I think you'll know, and I think we are, you know, fortunate in the sense mm. that we've been in many quite dangerous situations. We've had to, yes. you know, be in quite shocking situations, and so maybe we are better at dealing with it. But yeah. I mean, if you're in a car crash, yeah. the next time you get in a car, you're quite nervous about driving. Yeah, of course, you're quite you are. nervous about being a passenger. So you know. Would they have to have got back onto another bus to yeah. go to the game? Yes, yeah. that would have made them nervous. And, you know, they don't have any special training for this. They're, most of them are quite young mm. guys. Mm. They don't have any idea what you know, uh, the world is going to bring them. If they suddenly think they're going to be, uh, you know, targets yeah. of terrorism, yeah. then, you know, many of them will probably not be able to handle that very well. Well, I, yes, I agree with all your points. But, again, I would repeat what I said earlier. Older and wiser heads had to say to them, look, this is the way life is these days. This is the way the world works. Our freedom is under attack, and the only way that we can absolutely give the message back to those people is to get on with it. And we've got to get on with it tonight. I'm sorry you're upset, but we're getting on with it. Okay, that's, well, I mean, that's, that's what should happen. That, that's, that, I, don't, I don't disagree with it, but I think you're yeah. being slightly hard on the, on, on the people that have complained mm. about it because maybe uh, they could have had an extra night to play or had yeah. an extra night to think about it, mm. but that might not have been any better. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, so I mean, it's an interesting. Um, point that you make. My, my, my sense is that I agree with you, yes. so that I think you're being slightly hard on that. No, no, there are, there are a lot of people out there, Mike, who will agree with me. A lot of people out there. Well, there may well And be. I'd like to hear from some of them. But if I you agree with me, I, you I can don't... ring up the portmeister and tell me. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not about people agreeing with you. Whether yes. they agree with you or not does not make you right. Well, if they disagree with me, I would like them to ring up well, and tell me, that OK? Might be, that might be more so challenging. So would you like to tell them what the number is, that please? That might be more challenging for you. Yeah. It is 08717 A couple of tweets have come in on the front of the Air Leicester story that yes. I was talking about as well. Yes. Uh, here's one from somebody who doesn't give a name. Shouldn't Porky have been with the Leicester fans skirmishing with the Spanish riot police as he is little Englander himself? He was raving on about Gibraltar the other night. Uh, I wasn't raving on about Gibraltar, mate. I was making the point that Gibraltar happens to be a, you know, um, 
a, protect, a protectorate of uh, of England. How about this? The stupidest. And so stu- we have every day. right to uh, to guard it. Stupidest tweet of the night so far from David. Brexit raised its ugly head in Madrid last night. I mean, do me a favour. It's mm. got absolutely nothing to do with Brexit. What's it's it got, got to do everything with to do with a bunch yeah. of completely drunken idiots yeah. supporting a football team, That's right. taking off their tops and getting into a Barney mm. with a load of Spanish police. That's absolutely right. Uh, John says this: unprovoked attacks by Spanish police the night before. You're not saying anything about that, are you? Saying we should just take our beating like good little boys. I bet you to apologise to people who bump into you. Uh, well, I'm sorry, John, but uh, unprovoked attacks by mm. the Spanish police may or may not have taken place mm. the night before, but isn't it always how uh, the English fans are always being picked on by the Spanish police? Isn't it terrible how they got picked on by the French police as well? And, of course, they got picked on by the Russian uh, vandals over in uh, the Euros as well. Well, we did, actually. And, and mm. of course, you know, it's never the England uh, fans' fault. It's never the Leicester City fans' fault. It's never the Manchester City fans' fault. It's never anybody's fault. Mm. It's always the fault of somebody else. Do me a favour uh, and uh, grow well, up. Well, bit, well I think you're being a bit harsh there because I think the majority all. of fans who travel rubbish, and I've been amongst them you know, for many, many years are decent people, to be honest. And, and uh, we do attract the attention of, uh, of uh, foreign security forces because of the reputation we, we you know, sadly built up in the 70s and early 80s. Yeah, OK. What about mm. this from Scott? Uh, you boys are 100% right about these so-called fans. They're mm. all fans down no matter which team you support. Yep. Uh, thank you very much indeed for that. Let's talk to Terry. Uh, who's a West Ham Indeed. fan. Terry, very good morning to you. Mike, how are you? Very well, yeah, sir. Hello, what Terry. would you like to say, Terry? Do you want to agree with Porky or disagree? Well, to be fair, I don't know what Porky's point is, because, to be honest, I'll turn the volume down when he talks normally. <laughs> well, in that but, case, why have you rung up? <laughs> you're, a bit of a, you're a bit of a fool, aren't you, ringing up to t- have a conversation no, with right. me when you don't know what I've said? Hey, um, no, to be fair, Pompey, normally the big man, the other mic, he, he, he talks fine. But what my point is, right, okay, I phoned up earlier because I heard British fan or English fans being labelled again, right? Yeah. And then your, your, your guy on the phone saying, said to me, oh, there's videos going around of Leicester fans singing Gibraltar is ours, right? That's okay. right, yeah. So in fact, that, it, that's on my so Twitter feed, it, you want to see it. Right, okay, so what I've done, gents, is I've gone through my Twitter feed and I've had a look through and I've looked at video after video after video, right? Yeah. And the, the the clip that I've come up with, I've heard of probably about probably about ten, maybe twelve fans singing Gibraltar is out. Right? Yeah. Ten or twelve, okay. too many. And I, yeah, but Mike, hang on a minute, hang on. No, there's Mike, no excuse for it. I'm, I'm sorry, you're making I'm excuses. On, Mike, 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 hang on a minute, hang on two seconds before you go jumping in and cutting someone off, right? Okay. No, I won't cut you off just yet. Is, right, okay. Hold on. Well, my point is, right, okay, that's not right, okay? There are, that's 10 or 12. However, what we've had a history of is we've had a history of English fans maybe singing about the blooming English bombers or whatever it is. Well, we right, do. Okay? That, that happens a lot, we've also, it? Hold on, hold on. But we've also had a history of European fans singing to Man United fans about Munich, well, I'm afraid a, that's yeah. uh, that's a disgusting ditty that that uh, remanates around football. It's not just uh, European I fans. Uh, but I mean, but I mean, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Mike, you... Mike, Mike, what I'm no, not no, Mike, no, I'm not doing. no, Terry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Mike, what I'm not doing. Is Two not evils Mike. don't make a good. That's what I mean. I'm not justifying you those are. ten or twelve fans. No, but what I am saying is, you're tarring. Three or four no, they are. No, they are tarring the rest right? of the Leicester City travelling support. No, and the no, problem with why it's still... No, the reason no, it still goes tiring. on... Terry, the reason it's still going on is because people like you say, oh, it's just a few yeah, people, just don't a pay attention. Lads, yeah. And in the end, mm. that's tolerating it. And that's why it still goes on. Yeah, because exactly. if it wasn't tolerated, it, it though, would Iron stop. Mike. Hey? Iron Mike, hold on. Right, Iron Mike, right, big man. Right, okay. I'm not justifying it. I'm really not. I don't like it. I go to West Ham. Right? Well, if you don't like it, speak okay, up mate, against I, it. Don't I, ring us up and try and justify it. Polky, Polky, hang on. Listen, you're yeah. a man who came out with jockeys with wing mirrors. So yeah, that's on. right. And I still believe right. in it, by the way, and it Hold would on. work if somebody right. did it properly. Terry, I want to thank you very much Listen. indeed for calling. Right. Thank you. Terry, we've got to go because uh, mm. we've got to do some news, but we will be back. We've got loads more calls to take. 08717 If you don't condemn stuff, mm. it carries on. Exactly. That's the way of the world. This is Talk Sport.
Chris says, well said, Mike Graham, about English fans in Europe. It's always someone else's fault. The Russians, the Turkish, never mm. any blame here. Uh, and Robin says, what was that West Ham fan going on about? Morons in Spain, 6, 12 or 100. Yep. It matters not how many there are. Uh, they are morons. Mm-hmm. Uh, indeed. Yep. Absolutely right. They certainly uh, are. Now, you can tweet us, of course, at the two mics. You can uh, tweet at Mike Perrier, at IROMG, at TalkSport. There's all yes. sorts of ways you can get in touch. Yes. Uh, you can look for us on our Facebook page as well. Mm. Uh, there's all kinds of things going on. Uh, we can talk to uh, Matt now, uh, who's a Man United fan. Hello, Indeed. Matt. Matt. Hello. Hello. Very Hello. good morning Hello. to you. What would you like to say, Matt? Good morning. Yeah, it's regarding um, your, your conversation about the um, Dortmund side and yes. and whether or not you know they they should have played this evening. Yes. Um, my my opinion is it, 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 there is no right or wrong answer to this. It should be a matter of opinion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, my personal opinion is I think it's wrong that they should have been made to play this evening. Um, these guys have family at home, just like all the rest of us. Now, something incredibly um, harrowing happened to them yesterday. And for them to have to go out and perform on such a massive stage in a in a Champions League quarterfinal, um, I, I think that's... How, how on earth are they meant to do that and be completely focused on such a massive, massive, massive game? So what should have happened to the oh. fixture, Matt? Well, this is this is the thing. Um, there's so much. There'll be so much um, issues raised by that not happening. Hmm. Um, it's a very difficult question to answer. That well, you've okay, got to come I, with I, a solution. I, you have to have a solution. What is it? Okay, and that, and that's for UEFA to decide. I think not me. Hmm. Okay, but the solution should have been. I I, I believe definitely not receiving. Okay. Um, at least in a week's because time. You've also, Again, you think, I, but Matt, the other thing you've got to take into account here, and I, I understand your point and, and you're mm. making it very well because it is a very difficult situation. However, you must also take into account the other team, Monaco. You know, they have come of all the way from uh, the south of France and to their play, fans. A, play a game of football. And yeah, but let's just talk about the performance mm. of the players uh, yeah. individually. Yeah. You know, if they are left sort of in limbo, you have to give them a reason to either go home again uh, or stay for a couple of days. You can't just go, we're going to have to wait and see because that's not fair on them, is it? Of course it isn't, but, but it's an extraordinary situation, OK? Now, that's not the fault, fault of the Dortmund players. Or, that's not the fault of anyone, OK? It's an extreme situation, OK? Now, also, see what you're saying by, you know, life must go on. We can't, for example, the best way to let yep. so-called terrorism win is to carry on, so and so forth, mm-hmm. OK? But with respect to these professionals being able to right. carry out their professional duty mm. as football players... I, I believe personally that would have been incredibly difficult. Well, are you aware? Incredibly are, difficult. Are you aware of of the interview that Thomas uh, Tuchel gave? You know, the Dortmund manager, because mm. he says that each of the players were individually given the option not to play if they so wished. I mean, he has also said that he doesn't think the team were uh, in any way sort of prepared. Mm. But he said he offered that option to players, and none of them took it. But he also agreed the fixtures okay. to go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is it none of them? None of the players yeah. absented themselves from the game. Of course, but no, you're going to get one and then and then you become the guy who's let the side down. Unless it's a group decision, then fair enough. It, it has to come from a group. Or, of course, they're, they're, things would be weighing on their mind, like they let the fans down, you know, come out and show that solidarity. You know, they're a team. But I just think, yeah, well, I've made, I've made my point. Yeah, yeah. OK. I, well, listen, Matt, it's, 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 all right, Matt, it's, thank it's, you. It's, it's a very good point, but it illustrates the difficulties, I suppose, mm. of people who are not... In the firing line, without wishing to use a, a phrase yeah. uh, which is which is uh, you know in bad taste. Yes, you know both UEFA and the two clubs would have had to come to an agree- agreement very quickly. Yes, because things have to be done. That's right. And you can't, as I say, you can't just say to Monaco, "Well, we're not sure when we're going to play." No, I totally agree. But my, my main issue that is a very good point that had to be addressed, and yeah. therefore swift action was needed. The firm smack of management. But my main point is, you can't isolate football from the rest of society. It's already isolated from the rest of society by the normal wealth that is generated within the game and the distance between those who work in football and the fans who, who, who fund the game. Yeah. So you are isolating it further if you say, well, football is a special case. So when there's uh, the whiff of terrorism in the air, for want of a better word, we 
Get them out of there. And, and, and you know, they're, they're, they're not citizens who are expected to have to get on with life like the rest of us. And that's no. wrong. But, that's I mean, wrong. on the other hand, if you look at several other situations, like, for example, when that terrible attack happened in France at the mm. Bataclan back mm. in November of mm. 2015, I think you too were supposed to play a show in Paris um, yep. either that night or the next night. Yep. They cancelled it. I think Madonna was due to play a show in Paris uh, within the week. They cancelled it. You know, so you do have precedent of... You know, what you would call, I suppose, mm. people in the arts, people in, in, in rock yep. and roll, and so people in sport, I would say, come under that same category. Mm. Because they're, they're involved in making a performance. Yeah. And you can understand if, if the manager says, you know, their heads weren't quite right for it. Yeah, well, OK, but I still don't think there's a huge difference between them and a police officer who's got to go out on the beat the next day after going through the horrors of what happened well, on Westminster yeah, Bridge but not a lot of or what officers... happened in France. Because although yeah. those artists will have pulled out of yeah. future engagements... Probably for insurance reasons and all that sort of thing as well. Yeah. The average man in the street has to get on with it, and there shouldn't be an isolatory no, process true. between that's you know true. between one for uh, one group of people in society and another. No, I agree with that. But equally, I'm sure that most organisations nowadays will have the mm. wherewithal to say to someone, if you, you know, if you're a police officer, for example, and yeah. you were involved in yeah. some uh, some shooting the night mm. before, mm. Uh, you don't have to come back to work straight well, we'd away. We'd be in a right state then if everyone's off the option to well, no, you know if I it's think, oh, no, you're sure finding it too are. tough, just don't do it. No, I'm sure they That's are the wrong often. attitude. Well, the attitude well, is, look, it is that, tough, but, but you've not, got to do yeah, it. but it's not as black and white as that, well, Mike. You know I, that. Uh, well, it doesn't I'm sorry, have to be I'm as sorry, black and white I'm sorry, as that. but I feel that I have to express the way that I believe the attitude towards terrorism should be taken. Well, that's fine, but I'm disagreeing with you. Let's talk to Craig, who's an you're Arsenal fan. Craig, very, very welcome good to uh, disagree. morning to you. Thank you very much. It is Mike. a democracy. Yes. Yeah, hi, Mick. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to make a little point about the Leicester fan. Um, they will always get a, a percentage of fans that want to do those things. Why? Away. Why is that acceptable? Why is that acceptable, Craig? No, I'm not saying it's acceptable. I'm saying that you will always get a percentage of them who go away, they think it's just a drink up and have a party and... No, I mean, well, you can have a drink. Yeah, but hang on, hang on, Craig. You can have a drink up at a party without throwing rocks at the police and without oh, chanting yeah. ridiculous slogans like Gibraltar is ours. Yeah. I know that, but that's the point that I'm making. And you will always get a percentage of them. Well, I don't agree that you should get a percentage of. Obviously, they shouldn't. But how do they get on top of it? Well, you get on top of it by slamming them in a, a, a jail for a couple of days and making sure they don't travel anymore. And then that way, at least yeah, you get rid of the people who've done it before. Exactly. Then that's what she's talking to them. Yeah. Anyone who's but it doesn't, does it? That's it. They're not free to travel to there or ever again. I mean, you saw what happened in the Euros, right? When there was all those running battles going on in the streets of Marseille. Mm. Nobody was locking yeah. up these people. You know, some people were blaming the French police. Some people were blaming the Russian agent provocateurs. The bottom line was that nobody was getting locked up. Yeah. yeah. Everyone at a different... Always a percentage will put the blame to someone else. You don't want to take it on yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I don't accept that. I don't think that's yeah. right, and I don't think we should accept that a percentage of people do either. Let's yeah. talk to Mick, who's a Liverpool fan. Hi, Mick. Hello, lads. How are we? Yeah, yeah very good. What do you want to say, Mick? Look, a uh, reference to a guy who was on it uh, previously, not the, not the one before just now, uh, a couple ago. Yeah. Uh, Porky was right. And I think it, uh, the chap copped out. Uh, Porky was right in the fact of saying the Dortmund game should have gone ahead as, as, it, uh, as it did. Yeah. And the other guy turned around and said, uh, well, that was down to UEFA to make that decision. Mm. And I think, really, he, he, that's, that's not right. A decision needs to be made. And the, the people are there. They've got work. They've got all that kind of thing. It, it needed to be played. But I think yeah. Dortmund should, it should have come out and played even better than they normally would, mm. be more focused to prove to them we're not backing down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, think I, I was totally a bit agree of a with cop you. Out as well. I think it, I think it was a bit of a cop out mm. as well as, as to why Dortmund lost. Because I, I mean, in I'm a way, sorry, you get on that pitch, nobody goes on the pitch to lose. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, in a way, Mick, it was it was an opportunity for footballers to lead from the front, not to sort of cower at That's the back. Right. You know what I mean? Because this is a very That's public exactly event. Right. It's a big European football match, and they should have said to a man uh, after you know addressing their manager and their captain. We will go ahead with this game tonight. Under no circumstances would we ever want to have postponed it any further. This is our reply to terrorism. That's mm. what I would like to have seen. Yes. Well, indeed, they did that in a way. It's mm. just that now the manager's sort of saying after the fact yeah. that yeah. they weren't properly prepared. But mm. maybe maybe he's just angry with himself. Mm. Maybe he's angry with the players. Yeah. And maybe he just feels that they should have done better. And because they didn't win, yes. um, you know, he's trying to find an excuse. Yes. What do you think, Mick? Yeah, that's my point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Great stuff. Yeah, OK, Mark. thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you very much, Mick, in Liverpool. Yes. Uh, lots more calls to take. Uh, very, very good of you to ring up, of course, mm. because uh, we will always be interested in hearing your opinion. We certainly will. people are saying, why are the two mics asking people to ring up and then shouting over them? No, no, <laughs> no, no, that's not the case no, at that's all. Just, that's not the case. It is Mr Parry that's doing that, not me. No, it's, um, it's, it's called uh, debate. No, it's not. It is. It's called you only want to talk to people who agree with you. Well, I prefer to talk to people who agree with me because it means that they are better thinking people, if you see what I mean. Is but I don't right? mind talking to people who don't agree it's with very me. kind of you. Because, because I have the opportunity then to put you right. Yeah, do you want to give them a different number, though, so no, they can't get through? Not at all. 08717 We're going to be talking to Stuart Campbell, a former Leicester player. We'll see what he made of their performance and if he thinks they got a chance of getting through to the semi-finals. This is TalkSport. Where is my Talk sport. We are the two mics coming up a little bit later on. Porky Vision, of course, yes. which will be uh, Mr. Parry's guide to what you should be watching on television. Indeed, uh, some of the stuff you may well have seen, yeah. uh, and his own unique interpretation yeah. uh, of some of the storylines of uh, some of the stuff that you have seen. You are absolutely right. Indeed. Now uh, tomorrow, <laughs> yes. of course. Now I had a very interesting tweet today from someone, oh, yes. and I'm going to produce this one for you to show you um, because you know well, how we're doing a quiz on um, trivial pursuits. Yes, we are. Yes, there's a guy in Australia. Yeah who's got the football yes. Trivial Pursuit game, right? Mm-hmm. And the football Trivial Pursuit game is slightly different from the normal one. Right. Where it's got things like heroes and villains, yes. it's got statistics, it's got this, that and the other. Anyway, his suggestion, right, mm-hmm. and I thought it was quite an interesting one, yeah. but I will allow you to make the decision on it, Yes. Uh, was he said, how about I ask the questions over the phone from Australia Yes. Uh, on the Australian football Trivial Pursuit questions? Yes. And then uh, that's how we do the quiz. Yeah, I think that's a garbage suggestion. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. I did say that. But we get delays sometimes on lines to Australia. Uh-huh. Also, how do I know that, uh, you know, you are... You, uh, you're not going to tell me you suspect me of some kind of jiggery pokery. Well, how do I 10, know... 10,000 miles away. How do I know that this gentleman's a right and proper person who can well, read can properly? Check him out. Who can, uh, can check his tweet out. Who can take the cards. And how do I know that you haven't known this guy for a long time and that you well, actually, in you some t- way... You surely some take way, my word for it. No, no, I wouldn't take your word for it at all. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised you've been sending him emails all week and put him up to the idea. Idea really? And get him to and, and, and actually You're send him some questions. No, I'm not mad. Really? I'm very suspicious of you. Are you? Now, Why I want are to ask, you so suspicious of me? Well, because you are, you know, you you, you have led the life of uh, an alley cat for so many years. I think Incorrect. that your values in society have been corrupted and gone. No. Now then, I want to ask I'm you something. Offering you, well, just let, let it be known yes. that when you complain on uh, Friday morning mm. that you've only got four out of ten yeah. and that somehow the quiz has been gerrymandered, just remember that I offered you an opportunity to do it this way. Yes, OK, I will. Right. And it's an opportunity I have Turned down, okay, and thoroughly turned down, okay. Right. I'm not having anything that uh, involves you in, in, a, a, in, in a liaison with somebody else who I've never come across in my life because okay. they're almost certainly known to you. All right, well, right. actually, they're not, but never mind. There we are. Now then, I will tell you what I was going to ask you. Yeah, have you ever taken stuff to a charity shop? Um, I thought you were going to ask me something else there for a second. Have I ever taken stuff to a charity shop? Yes. And what happens when you get there? Uh, well, it depends. I took a lot of records once to a charity right. shop. Because okay. I've, over the course of, I would say, the, the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years, I've yeah. tried to pare down my record collection. Yes. I've got it down to about 100 albums now. Okay. Um, and at one point, I had about mm. 200. Mm. And I took about 50 down to this cha- local charity shop. Right. And they only took about half of them. Mm-hmm. Because they said, we can't take all of these because um, we'll never be able to shift them. Yeah. And a lot of people see these charity shops as a place to dump stuff. Well, funny you should say that. It. Funny you say I've seen reports on charity shops, right? Yeah. First of all, half the stuff that goes in there is too revolting to even what do you mean? unpack. Well, people sometimes... Do you mean the stuff they leave outside? No, stuff that they actually take in from mm. their homes. And do you know what it is? It's, mm. They've just got a load of old clothes that they can't be bothered to wash. They yeah. put them in a, in a, in a bag and yeah. they just dump them. And, and they're, you know, the clothes are literally filthy, yeah. you know, and all this kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So there's all that. Well, do you know that you can recycle that yeah. stuff now? I mean, there's no reason to apparently take it to a charity can. shop. Apparently you, go you can. Re- well, not apparently. I know you can yeah. because I go and recycle stuff. Yeah. And if you see, uh, you can recycle shoes, yeah. recycle clothes. Yeah. It can well, all be done. Uh, there is, uh, there is uh, like... I mean, you're big... still wearing clothes that you would never recycle. No, not at all. There is a big green bin somewhere near me which says put your shoes in here. Yeah. I don't know why, but people come along and put their old shoes in. Yeah. You know. Well, do you not do that? No. What do you do with all your old shoes? Throw them out. So you've got loads of pairs of old shoes. I have, so You yeah. buy like about three pairs of shoes a month, don't you? No, not, not, that, not that many. But anyway, look, what I was going to say to you yeah. is this, uh, this leads to a greater problem because we're coming up to a bank holiday weekend, uh-huh. OK? Yes. Now, at a bank holiday weekend, sometimes the charity shops don't open for maybe four days, right? Right. Well, but, that's no good, is it? Yeah, I mean, they won't open probably on Good Friday, or they might do, I don't know, Easter Monday, Easter Sunday, you see what I mean? Yeah. So the Long problem weekend. is, 
the people come along and even if the stuff's good, mm. they come along in their 4 by 4s they open the tailgate. Why do you make it out like they're all people with 4 by 4s Because a lot of them are, because I see this happening. I witness it. Oh, do you? Yes. Well, you're standing observing on the sidelines, are no, you? No, no. Like, an when, when I make one of my regular walks across the, um, the North Downs, uh-huh. I get to the end, to a, a little place where there is a rather delightful pub, right? Oh, yeah. And I can sit in the window having my lunch, and I look out over... The green, and on the other side is a charity shop. Uh-huh. And I see these people with their four by fours turning up, right. opening the tailgate, mm. and bringing out enough stuff to move house, yeah. and leaving it in the doorway of the charity shop. Yeah, I've seen them do that. And as then well. half an hour later, or an hour later, somebody else comes along, and yeah. you end up literally with the charity shop eventually having to order a skip yeah. to get rid of well, the amount of rubbish you, that's been dumped see, there over the weekend. Whenever you see, I mean, because it's a bit like a queue in this country, yeah. whenever you see a pile of stuff, yes. people go and put more stuff on the pile. Yeah, they do. It's a sort of, uh, it's a sort of um, ant-like behaviour. Yes. Herd-like behaviour, I suppose I should say. Yes, that's right, mm. yeah. Um, so you've never given anything to a charity shop, I presume? Who, me? You. Um, well, come on, it's not a difficult question, is it? I can't remember. I think Maybe I do. Oh, I, yes, I do. I do. What I do you do. give them? I don't well, know. You've got a house full of tat. No, 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 no. If anything I don't want, I give it to my housekeeper, and right. she's like big in the charity shop world. Big in the and charity she, shop yeah, world. How do you mean that? Well, I mean, I think she's got friends who work there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so she uh, she takes the stuff to them. She's big in the charity yeah, shop world. That's right. Yeah. Well, like she's Mr. Big. Well, yeah, but I mean, well, she's Mrs. Big, isn't she? She knows what she can and, get away uh, with, and she knows, you know, the stuff that I don't need or require and all that kind of stuff. Takes it, but it's all new stuff. Mm. You see, this is another angle of the charity shop. Yeah. On the one hand, they're always complaining they get too much rubbish and all that kind yeah. of. Yes. stuff but then you go in there and you look at some of the stuff they've got and they're actually competing yeah. with new goods against other shops in that street yeah. who pay far more business rates mm. and taxes they, than though? the charity shop yes they do does the charity shop get a special deal charity though? shops get special deals that's but the they, whole point of charity do, shops but they also do have overheads don't they because a lot of people have complained and said the problem with giving stuff to charity yeah. shops is that they are also running a business and so it's not as if they're working on zero profit they are making a profit they and are. they are paying the people that work there. So they are actually not, running... They don't pay most of the people who work there. Most of them are volunteers. No, not, that's not absolutely A lot of them are true. volunteers. A lot of them are, but they have, yeah. they have costs, right? Yeah. And they do need to make money. Yes. So actually, what you give the charity shop does not yes. always, like all charity stuff, yeah. does not always make it to the charity. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I, no, I understand. I mean, for example, you may have yeah. seen, because you made some ludicrously yeah. kind of rude remark, as you always do, what do you uh, mean? whenever anything serious is put up there. My daughter is uh, running for charity in Regent's Park now. Yes, next month. That's good. And uh, she was fundraising uh, yesterday, so really? I gave her some help on Twitter. Right. And you made some disparaging remark about her and me, which I was absolutely appalled by. No. And I also noticed, having checked her uh, uh, charity mm. account, yes. that you haven't yet made a donation. Well, uh, all I said was, you said, oh, you know, my lovely daughter, and I agree with that, that's great. I know uh-huh. Emma very well indeed, she's a beautiful young yeah. lady, uh, is running. All I said was, Clearly, she hasn't been following your diet yeah. or lifestyle. Well, why What's wrong you, with that? Well, why wouldn't you just retweet it and try and raise some money for the charity instead of trying to be a smart ass? I will. I will hey? definitely help. There yeah. won't be a problem. Well, but I, haven't, I, thought... I haven't seen. As somebody said, let's yes. hope that Porky's mm. reaching into those uh, long pockets of his, yes. those short arms. Yes, because it seems so far that that hasn't happened. Well, you've I'm got to shock. You've got to remember. You've got to remember that with my advanced sort of skill oh, in yeah. communication. By putting that uh, ribald little note in about which well, is clearly not following, you know, your lifestyle or or uh, or diet, oh, yeah. other people will uh, snigger and giggle and Nobody then think. Did. And then, no, people and then just thought it was that's appalling... so funny. Um, draw no, more attention just, to no, it. No, people just thought it was an appallingly bad taste. No, no, no it draws more attention to it. And therefore, more people then are aware of it, and then she gets more money. It's all a plan, man. You know is that what, what I mean? It is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't realise you had a plan. Yeah, I have a plan for oh, everything. In that case, I take it all back. Thank you. I have well a plan done. for everything. I'll look forward to your donation flooding in. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm, mm. uh, I'm, well, you know, well, we've got to be measured about these things. Yeah. But, uh, but yes, uh, yeah, that's I know not a problem at all. You can't look after everyone, I know that. Well, I've got to, you know, I've got to... Have you got I, the Easter eggs for my kids yet, by the way? Because, uh, you know, I won't be here much after... I mean, you better get them by Saturday. Oh, really? Oh, is that oh, an yeah, ultimatum, but, is well, it? Well, it's yeah. not an ultimatum, no, yeah. but I'm going down yeah. to see them, and Easter Sunday is on yeah. Sunday, oh, okay. which is when you give them the eggs. So well, if you don't give them to me on Saturday, they obviously won't get them, What day they? is it today? Uh, today is Wednesday going into Thursday. Right, and tomorrow's Friday. Yes. And then you've got Saturday. Yeah. I think I'll be able to manage to get the eggs to you by then, OK? Well, I'm just reminding you, uh, because you're always telling me how busy you are, uh, right? No, so I don't know whether you'll be able to have time to find them. If you don't get them tomorrow, mm. then you won't see me until Saturday, will you? Well, fortunately not. Uh, now, uh, you've got to remember that I'm already negotiating the payment to the horse charity as a I result of I heard a funny my... story about the horse charity today, actually. What? I heard a funny story about that horse charity today. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Uh, Neil is a Man United fan in Worcester. Oh, yeah? Hello, Neil. 
Hi, Neil. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you going? Yeah, yeah very, very well, well indeed. Thank what, you. What would you like to tell us? Well, I used to work for a textile recycling company yes. in um, Erith in Dartford. Oh, yeah. And the, the job was to go to all the charity shops. We have major contracts with all the major charities. Mm. And you go in and we would actually pay the charity shops for their old um, unwanted clothes, shoes, books. Yes. And I tell you, it is the most corrupt business that you'll ever come across. I've heard, I've heard this, Neil. This is what I'm saying. You know, there's, is, there's a reason why every shop that history. opens on a high street is a charity shop, because they're all making a fortune. They are making, this is no word of a lie, uh, there's shops that I used to go into and take the clothes. Mm. They would make um, in excess of £150 per collection. They used to have three or four of these collections a week. Mm. Uh, like, just, just for stuff that's been dumped on the door. Yeah, but hang on, isn't that going to the charity, no. Neil? If it's a British well, Heart Foundation, doesn't it go to research? Well, um, I, I, I beg to differ that, especially when a lot of the times you're paying cash and it's, yeah... Ooh, I would say I'm at not, least... I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not sure about I think, that. I think, Neil, you, you could say with a reasonable amount of surety that not 100% of it goes to the charity, right? Well, I don't think you can uh, say yeah. that, you know. I, I well, think that's, uh, that's I've read, I've read one of these read, urban myths. Well, no, it's not an urban myth. I've read investigations. I promise, yeah. Mm. I promise, mm. I promise, and, especially, and and some of the textile recycling companies, mm. you go in, and this is why I left the company. We go into the job, we go into the charity shop. Mm. You take, you, 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 there'd be a hundred kilos of clothes there or shoes or mm. whatever, mm. but you take them to the van, you'd weigh them, but you wouldn't pay the hundred kilos. Mm. You'd pay seventy-five. Mm. I see. So, the so the kilos that was left over, you would actually. Um, the, the company would be getting it for free, and they did sell it for a, a pound, one pound twenty. A so kilo. that's not really that's, that's not really the charity shop cashing in. That's the company no, 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 collecting no, 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 the no, goods, isn't it? What, what, no, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, as you guys were talking about earlier on, yeah. was that a lot of these people are, are volunteers, and a, and a lot of ex criminals and things like that. Not not, not disrespect to anybody, mm. Mm. but when you when you just give someone, um, I, I don't know, say fifty quid in cash, that that can go into the till. I don't see it go into the till. It's up to them. Um, there's no, there's no um, way of. There, there are some of the charities actually. Um, there's no, there's no, out. there's just no way of measuring it, Neil. Is that? That's mm. the problem. We've got to run. But thank you very much for yeah, your call. Thank you very much. Uh, more coming up. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> been quite a serious show so far, so I'm delighted to say that this is kind of cheering up the mood a little yeah, bit. Certainly Great song, is. actually, I have to say. Haven't heard that for a long time. Yeah, well, that's the Jacksons as opposed to Michael yes. Jackson, OK? Right. Now, the don't reason... blame it on the sunshine. Yeah, blame don't blame it on the, the boogie. Sunshine. Blame it on the boogie, that's yeah. right. Now, the reason that I'm playing that is because... Uh, the reason we're playing that is because, believe it or not, the yeah. Jacksons are coming to tour Britain. Are they? And one of the places they're going is the Pavilion Theatre in Bournemouth. Oh, right. Where we were once offered a, well, a, a live show. Yes, indeed. And, and, in fact, I was only down in Bournemouth just the other day. Right, of course you were. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Now, the point is that uh, ahead of this, of course, you know, a lot of the Jacksons brothers will be talking. Yeah. And it's amazing that how they sort of try and marry up their failed careers yeah. with Michael Jackson's well, spectacular career. I mean, you know Michael I mean? Jackson, at the time when he died, mm. was, was he not uh, rehearsing to do a massive tour well, with, with the rest of his brothers? Well, you see, this is very interesting because what's happened is I've, uh, I've read a piece here which um, Jackie Jackson, who's one of the brothers, wrote. Yeah. The brothers are Jackie, Marlon, Tito uh, and Jermaine. And okay? Jermaine, yeah. Jermaine was the one that was going to sue me for 28 million quid. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. But he yeah. never did. Yeah, well, Sony were going to sue <laughs> us for 50 million when I re- rewrote the words of a Michael Jackson song for a bit of a laugh and yeah. uh, Sony in America right. didn't think it was very funny. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the point of the story is... Yeah. Uh, this is this is Jackie's version. He says, I was on the Las Vegas Strip when a passerby blurted out um, the words, I hear Michael Jackson has died. Uh, I had a hat on and glasses. Uh, I'm the eldest Jackson brother, and uh, I didn't really want anybody to know who I was. So I kept walking, thinking that I must have misheard, and then I heard more and more people saying, Michael Jackson has died. Right. He said, the third time I heard it, I fell to the ground. 
Uh, well, as he was walking down the road. Well, he was. He just got back into the Venetian hotel okay. where I've stayed. Actually, Have it's, uh, it's a lovely hotel. Yeah. Right. He said I couldn't even walk. My legs were like jelly. Is that the one with the gondola? Yes, yes, yes. That's mm. right. Yeah. My my uh, my legs were like jelly. Uh, and then he goes on to say, Malcolm's death was a personal tragedy for Jackie, who maintains that the Jacksons were always a tight-knit family. And not everybody's sure that is absolutely true. I'm not sure that is correct. True. But um, he goes on to say, this is, this is where it's it all a bit strange, uh, it was a professional blow. When Michael um, overdosed on a surgical anaesthetic in June 2009, he was rehearsing for a 50-date run at the O2 in London. Now, we knew about that. Yes, okay? we did. And we knew that uh, he looked terribly thin in mm. rehearsals and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Because and... he'd become addicted to a whole series of, of what would appear to be yeah. um, completely legal drugs. Prescription drugs, yeah. Prescription drugs. That's yeah. right, yeah. And, uh, and nobody was very sure whether he'd ever get through, you know, mm. even the first 10, let alone 50 and all that kind of stuff. Right. However, according... Going to Jackie, the real tragedy is, is that uh, he was going to do the um, the fifty shows right. on his own, mm. but then that was only a warm up for the fact that he was going to then reunite yeah. with the rest of the Jackson brothers. Right, they were going to become the Jackson Five, yeah. and uh, they were going to tour the world right. for the first time in twenty five years. And what about the girls? What about like Janet? Well, I don't think they were included in the original group, and they okay. wouldn't have been part of it. Yeah, right. But the the point is, that the reason this is all so contradictory mm. is that actually, if you read a lot about what happened in the Jackson family in the yeah. years before Michael Jackson died. Mm. He wasn't going towards his brothers. He was running away from he them. He was, yeah. Be- because he had a special room, right, at Neverland, mm. where he literally bolted and locked himself in whenever his brothers came calling right. and told the housekeeper he wasn't there. <laughs> because the problem with the Jackson... Which they knew, of course, he was, because yeah. he didn't ever go anywhere. <laughs> he didn't go anywhere. Well, it's no. difficult to go. Like, where's uh, Michael? Yeah. He's not here. He's not here, well, no. no he's, he's always here. Yeah. He's, he's got a whole, you know, yeah. uh, circus in the gardens. He doesn't ever go out. No. Only that, but if he does go out, usually about fifty million people would spot yeah, him. If exactly. you know what I mean, yeah. yeah. So he hasn't actually Do you gone remember out. Remember that? Yeah. Um, was it? I don't know if it was mm. a documentary, but mm. there was a there was a film made, or at least a, a report, yeah. and he went out shopping with like sort of Elizabeth Taylor, and yeah, all these shops on Rodeo Drive, and yeah, and all something that. like that. Yeah. It was just pretty yeah. bizarre. Yeah, I did. And see, all the yeah. shops had to be closed for him, and mm. he had to be able to shop on his own. Well, if he ever went to a public facility like yeah. a cinema or yeah. a fairground, and in, 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 you know, as well as his own, they had to shut the whole thing, and he had to had it all to himself. Mm. Um, but anyway. The point I was going to say is that once he left and went and became a solo artist, yes. the brothers were actually completely beached. Yeah. And so what happened was he came under pressure from his parents yeah. about every two or three and years. And also his father wasn't a very nice no, guy, No, his father was wasn't a really nice guy. And his father, of course, was on percentages of everything when yeah. they were kids and all that. Right. But, but he came under pressure from his parents saying, oh, you know, the boys, you know, they're really suffering now. They're down mm. to their last Ferrari. They're yeah, down yeah. to their last sort of $2 million house. Mm. Why don't you go on tour with them? Yeah. And the only reason to go on tour was not because it artistically it was a great step forward. It's because the brothers had run out of dosh. Yes. And they needed some more. And he did and, have an enormous amount of money. Well, well, not only that, but he had enormous appeal. Mm. So if the if the Jackson brothers... Uh, by the way, just to illustrate, uh, you know, how they weren't quite in the same stratosphere as their brother Michael, yeah. uh, they are appearing at... Uh, the Glind in East Sussex, the Greenwich Music Time in London, and uh, the Pavilion Theatre in Bournemouth. So, so it's not a massive tour. W- w- well, I it's... mean, it's not. It's not like they did seven nights at the O2. No, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm or saying. What was he doing? Fifteen nights at the O2. Or Fifty. Right? Five o. Fifty. 50 yeah. yeah. But no, the point I'm, I'm <laughs> making is that if the brothers suddenly announced that they were doing, say, you know, the Hollywood Bowl yeah. as the four Jackson brothers, yes. they would sell about fifteen tickets. Yeah. They announced they were doing the Hollywood Bowl with Michael Jackson. Yeah. They would sell out ten sell nights out on the a, on yeah. the on we'll the for a year on, for a year yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Well, so we've we've got a very small amount of experience now in this area, haven't yeah. we? In terms of booking theatres and yeah, doing we shows have, yeah. and all that, and we may have some news on that uh, yes. coming up in the next few weeks as yes, far as uh, right. where we're going to be playing is concerned. Yeah. But I mean, uh, it's incredible how mm. many acts that have previously been huge yeah. are suddenly no longer <laughs> and just can't even <laughs> sustain a tour. Well, you know, there's another quote here. I'm didn't sorry, Geldof I'm not. Did not... Geldof have to cancel his tour? Geldof. Uh, I read that Bob yeah. Geldof cancelled three theatres in the north yeah. where he couldn't sell the tickets. Right. And I also read that the boys who got together... Sorry, did you mention this? Um, uh, when will I be famous? When will I, yeah. will I be famous? Yeah. I know the song. Dancing. Yeah, you know, uh, Luke and Goss, Matt Goss. Oh, the Goss brothers. The yeah. Goss brothers, yeah. yeah. What were they called? Bros. 
Bross, that's it. Bross. They went bankrupt, though. One of them went bankrupt. So I remember covering it, it, the case. Yeah, but then when they when they tried to come back, mm. the only one they sold was like a major city one. Yeah. That to cancel all the others. Well, I remember bread. when I was in Scotland, there was a guy from Blue, the band yeah. Blue, yeah. like a boy band. I think that was um, Wayne Rooney's favourite band, actually. Duncan somebody, yeah. I think his name was. Yeah. Uh, it was thrown out of a nightclub because mm. of the fact that uh, he turned up late for his appearance that right. he wanted to be doing. Yes. And was completely sort of incapable of making the appearance, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, sure. But yeah. the most shocking thing was to mm. me mm. Uh, that he was only getting paid 300 quid for it. <laughs> for an appearance? Yeah, 300 quid. Good God. And I thought, Amazing, blimey, yeah. I mean, you know, two years earlier, you wouldn't have got the band for <laughs> no. like 20,000. No, exactly. But yeah. he was in some dodgy Edinburgh nightclub it, it's for 300 a, quid. It's unbelievable. Jackie says, anyway, talking about what the forthcoming Jackie? tour, what Jackie, what Jackie says, he says, he... As long as Mick Jagger's still doing it, we're going to keep doing it. Yeah, the difference is Mick Jagger's doing it in stadiums. Yeah, somebody you know, points for out... a million dollars a night. Exactly. <laughs> somebody, somebody points out, this is not an exact analogy. Right. <laughs> the Rolling Stones still have Mick uh, Jagger and Keith Richards, whereas the Jacksons without Michael are actually not even a proposition. No. There's no point pretending differently, so they don't. They performed the ballad "I'll Be There," the Jackson Five's most successful single. Even that wasn't theirs, was it? That was that was. No, "I'll Be from... There" was. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was their the song. Four, wasn't it the Four Tops? Originally, well, you may be right. I'll I think there. it was. Reco- I think it was covered by a couple of people. I okay, think they yeah. did write it though. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it, and, and they do it. This is another incredible thing. They do it in front of a giant image of Michael Jackson. And he says he gets very emotional. <laughs> well, why yeah, have I they bet it a, does. Yeah, why have they got yeah, to have a... They're very emotional about the fact that they can't get more money <laughs> out of him. Right. You know, it's an absolute shocking state of affairs. Exactly. You know, there's only so much you could wring out of a dead rock star. Yeah, exactly. Star. Exactly. Unbelievable. It's, absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. It says, Michael achieved such stratospheric worldwide fame that his family are now forced to live with his presence wherever they want to or not. Whenever I drive down the strip, all of a sudden, the big old billboard truck with his face is right there, driving around in front of me. Yeah. I get into a cab, it's got a picture of Michael Jackson in it. He never goes away. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it, the uh, the amount of influence that man had. It really is, when, yeah. You know, when we were there in the 80s and he was called the King of Pop, do you yeah. remember he went to one place to do a concert somewhere like Atlanta or something? Yeah. And the local police chief allocated 50 officers mm. as a personal bodyguard to yeah. Michael Jackson. Yeah. They were that concerned that nothing would go yes. wrong while he was in town. Oh, he was incredible. And these 50 cops had to sit around in the in the lobby of hotels mm. whenever Michael Jackson was in his room yeah. and never and never go anywhere. Right. You know, they were allocated oh, to yeah. Michael Jackson. And, and, you know, the journalists were all over the yep. place. There was, yep. you know, long lenses, pokes everywhere. That's there was right, people yeah. trying to get into the hotel mm. and get onto the same floor. I mean, it was absolute madness. Incredible. It was, yeah. Incredible stuff. Yeah. Uh, we've got lots more to do, including Sandra Lee coming up in a little while. This is TalkSport. It's a wonderful night. You gotta take it from me. It's a wonderful night. Come on and break it on down. It's a wonderful night. You gotta shake it from me. It's a wonderful night. Come on and break it on down. It's a wonderful night. Talk sport. We are the two mics, and of course, uh, coming up a little bit later on the show, Porky Vision, uh, yep. and then the Porky Quiz tomorrow uh, is going to be based on Trivial Pursuit questions. Yes. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of tweets that I need to get to. Uh, Phil says, "Why don't you just let Porky set the quiz questions? That's the only way you'll not be accused of jiggery pokery." Oh, uh, you see, yeah, uh, I know the cynics out yeah. there. You know, if you knew what went on in the gerrymandering of this competition, believe me, you wouldn't. Uh, well, I mean, it's now you video. would not believe it's it. It's now recorded on mm. video, so you can. Stop with all this nonsensical yeah. propaganda that you put out, making out that there's a problem with the, the way that it's put together. Yes. Uh, Gavin says this, I've mm. got visions of Porky lurking near charity shops waiting for some new Pierre Cardin shirts being donated. <laughs> yeah, well, you're more likely to give those away these days, I think, than... Uh, well, you probably should do, yeah. Well, well no, I don't. I, there's nothing wrong with them. When I used to buy Pierre Cardin shirts, and I haven't bought one for well, years, you mean literally. you don't buy them anymore? No. Why no, not? No. Was it well, that good? I didn't know they'd gone out of fashion. I thought they were still like a top French brand. You know, mm. I didn't realise they were sold in Sports Direct. because of their Direct. association with Sports Direct. Well, no, I think Sports Direct's a great shop. It I've meets, got to go uh, to Sports Direct, actually, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, it meets a, it meets a great demand for its uh, its audience and all that. But yeah. I didn't know. I had no idea they sold PR card and yeah. shirts. And then I think it was because Mike actually bought the company, didn't he? Um, yes, I believe so. Yeah. I mean, I've been asked to get a pair of trainers, right? Specific right. trainers, which yep. are made by Nike. But they're not sold by Nike. They're only sold by Sports Direct. OK. So, so what, what's that got to do it? with Pierre Cardin? Uh, well, because Pierre Cardin and Sports Direct are one and the same, aren't they? Are they? You OK. You can only buy the shirts there. But what I'm saying is, is there's obviously something weird going on. I went into a Nike shop today in Covent Garden. Yes. And said, I want to buy these trainers. Mm. And they said, oh, we don't sell those. And I'm like, well, they're Nike trainers, aren't they? Yeah. Yep. Well, why don't you sell them? Well, we only sell them through Sports Direct. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, Isn't they told weird? you they only sold one particular model of their brand. Well, no, they sell, well, they sell lots of different types of, of Nike yeah. trainers at Sports Direct, right? Yeah. Because that's where you get some sometimes, don't you? Uh, yeah, I think I, mean, I have, have done. done, yes, yeah. But what I'm saying is, for some reason, they don't sell, they only sell 
those particular brands. Yeah, I see. Yeah, in you know, in another shop, they well, don't sell it in their own shop. I'm, I'm amazed. I find that strange. I'm amazed that they actually recognise the brand you're talking about because I go to a Nike shop down mm. in Gunwolf Keys all yes. the time. And if you go in one day yeah. and see a particular trainer you like, and then you think about it overnight and think, I should have bought that, you go yeah. back the next day, it's not there. Yeah, right. It's changed to another brand. Mm. You know what I mean? They've, they've probably only had about 100 boxes well, of it. Unless they shift the stuff so they're, quickly. They're absolutely no, incredible. This guy, no, this guy was adamant. Yeah. I showed him the, the, the type, I showed him yeah. the name. Yeah. Uh, he knew exactly what I was talking about, and he said, no, we do not sell those at Nike. Right. This well, is weird, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, now, How about this from Jay? He yeah. said, I don't want to start a whole thing, but when I drove a van for Help the Aged, my yeah. area manager drove a Bentley. <laughs> End of story. Good girl. Uh, he also said it was the only driving job I've had where no records of fuel or mileage were taken. Drivers used their vans to earn extra cash. Mm-hmm. So it's not run... I mean, a lot of these charity shops are not run, what you might say, by the book. I think because they're charity shops, they are given a charitable view by the authorities. Yeah, but I think and, the point and is... And some is, suggestion that's been abused. Well, I think it is, partly yeah. through, through um, uh, I suppose, just the process of osmosis. Because yes. if you run something which is not particularly well looked after yeah. or regulated, you can get away with a lot more. Yeah. And it is a, a cash business yeah, to sure. a large extent. Sure. I mean, if you go and take stuff to a shop, mm. which they can then sell, mm. they're going to make a profit. But uh, I have had doubts about big charities for a long, long time. When I started reading about, you know, the chief executives of charities earning sums of up to £600,000 yeah. a year right. of relocating to office blocks costing £10 million. Yeah, well, they're uh, in the middle of London, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, why, why would you do all that? Why, why don't you minimise your costs and, and make sure that most of the money goes to the charity? Yeah. That's why I prefer these days to go... Uh, and exclusively to local charities yeah. because you know that where the money's going. Well, let me hear. Let me. Look, we're going to hear from a guy who used to manage a charity shop called Graham. In one second, first though, yes. Ben says, "I used to love Bros, Luke, and uh, Goss." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, who was it then? Luke yeah, and thanks, then. Uh, it That's was... them. Well, hashtag was it, plank. Was it Matt and Luke? I think it was Matt Goss and uh, Luke, wasn't it? Yeah, Matt and Luke Goss, and then the other guy who was the drummer, wasn't he? I don't know. Who went off and married Moss? The, uh, eh? Moss. Moss? No, no, it was Moss. No, <laughs> he went off and married the sister, uh, tragically, of the that lovely young singer who died of uh, of cancer, sadly. Who? Mel and Kim. One of them. Oh, yeah. One of them sadly died really? of cancer, and, okay. and I think he married the other one. Why yeah. are you such an expert on sort of nineties pop? Well, I'm an expert on a lot of things, if you see what I mean. Oh, I know that. So we've, uh, we've, run, we've done the quizzes. Let's talk to Graham, who's in Stockport. Hi, Graham. Hello. Hi, yeah, yeah. hi, what Graham. Would you like to tell us about running a charity shop, Graham? Oh yeah. Can I just say uh, I'll be there. Michael Jackson yes. in the Four Tops. Two different songs. One was Reach Out, I'll Be There. Yes. By the, by the Four Tops. Right. The other one was I'll Be There by Michael Jackson. Yeah, I thought that's it was, a, that's it, absolutely I it was, true. I didn't think it was... Uh, absolutely I it, I true. It was well a done. Jackson composition, but thank you for that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Anyway, tell you that. Yeah, I did use to manage a charity shop. I will not say which one. Okay. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it was... Uh, it's hard graph for the managers. The managers get paid. Mm. Uh, the manage, are the managers paid per uh, sort of amount of profit they make, or is it a straight salary? No, no, it's a straight. It's not a lot. I was on about thirteen grand a year. Mm. That's not a lot, is it? No. Oh, Paul, no. Paul, Paul horrified by that. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. You earn it as well. From when you go in at nine o'clock, mm. you don't stop. Uh, and I have an assistant manager work two days a week. The rest is all volunteers. Mm-hmm. Um, and on the front line in the, in the shops, it's dead straight. Mm. It's um, we used to sell the rags like that guy before was talking about any old clothes that came in. Yeah, uh, we used to rag them. That's what we called it. Put them in bags and uh, we'd sell them to a ragman that came once a week. Right, I see. He, he would give us a check. He'd weigh them, and he, he his weights would always be different than ours. Right. But we'd get a check, and that'd go straight into the uh, into the you know into the till. Yes. Um, to, to to feed the charity. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and on the front line, no, he was dead straight. All the managers were, that I knew anyway, and I was, it was all dead straight. Everything went in. Yeah. But what about the amount um, of, of profit, say, for example, that you made? Yeah, that, that's that... what I was coming to. The, the, no, the, right. profits, the profits were massive. Yeah. It was big business. It was big business. And, um, I mean, the, like the CEO must have been on 100 grand, maybe 200 grand mm-hmm. a year. That, you know, once yes. you got to the top, yes, um, that's where the money went. There was a uh, well, one of the CEOs was uh, enticed over from a big chemical company, right? I don't know if I can mention that one, but a massive, big, well known medicine company, yes, right. worldwide. And he was enticed to come over and be the CEO at the charity company. It's a, a big name that I'm talking about, mm-hmm. 
Um, so he was on. He lived in Surrey for of all places. Yeah. You know, a nice big house in Surrey. Hmm. You might know him, Mike. You may be. Um, <laughs> might be a member of my golf club. You're not but a member of a golf well, club. Yeah. Well yeah. Uh, but that's the money. You know, the, the, yeah, but what I'm saying is, uh, Graham, how much of that money went to the charity in terms of the big money that you're talking about? How much of it went to the administration of the charity? A lot of it. A lot of it. There was a lot of... Um, a lot of it went to... Um, publicity and fundraising people that they had. A lot of people on, on the making money on the outskirts of it, if you like, of the shop. The shop was the central thing that brought the money in. Mm. And then as it, as it got up, because it came, it, it is a big business, um, it, it got spread out. So very little went to where it was going, if you right. know where it was meant to so, go. Yeah, now I understand what you're um, saying. And, and, how and did... also with what Mike was saying before, what, what, what Porky was saying before, yeah. A lot of new goods. Uh, one of the things I didn't like, we got every Wednesday a delivery of new goods, all made in China. Right. Uh, would all come over, and that would take over um, half the shop, maybe sometimes. In some shops, three quarters of the shop. Yeah. But as long as you're taking some kind of um, donation... Yes, free stuff. Uh, free stuff, yeah. You can call yourself a charity. Mm. Yeah, I see. But, How did you actually feel, Graham, working on, for a bit of a pittance of a salary knowing that you were funding extraordinary and extravagant lifestyles of those higher up the pecking order than well, you. Well, in the end, that was one of the reasons I left in the end, because I, I, I was um, disillusioned by it, I suppose. Yeah. Um, because you are thinking, well... And, and even the smaller charities, the, um, there's a cat charity near where I live, that I thought was just a local charity. Yeah. And when all that thing happened in the Iceland banks, it, it turned out they had about 40 million quid stashed in there. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. when you were working for 13 grand a year, Graham, I mean, were you able to live on that? Were you, did you have to do other stuff as well? Well, I also, had, uh, I also uh, got an occupational pension from a previous okay. job. Okay, I see. So, so, uh, people, who, I, so people who, work, who run the shops tend to have other income then? Well, I did. I had an occupational pension. But I think there's a lot of um, uh, people that might have a spouse that... that He's working, getting yes. a decent yeah, job. Sure. You know, yeah, sure. Um, sure. It is, it's really hard work for the manager. I've got every respect when I go into a charity shop. Yeah. Of, uh, and then, again, going back to what Porky said about the things that are donated, some of the bags of yes. clothes that you get, yeah. you'd have filthy underpants and filthy knickers. Oh, dear, we don't yeah. even know about it. It's a family show. Oh, dear, it's a family uh, show. But I listen, think, Graham, uh, thank you very much. Graeme, sorry, speech. just before you go, mate, one of the worst things I've noticed when I've been in one occasionally are people really haggle on the price. If something's marked yeah, there for yeah, 80p, yeah, they yeah, say, yeah, can yeah. I have it for 60 yeah, exactly. yeah, you can't say it'd be 50p for, um, I don't know, a really decent hardback book that might cost you 12 quid. Yeah. It'd be there, it'd be there for a quid, you'd say, well, would you take 50? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. the price on it, you know. Shocking, uh, yeah. And that was the other thing you had to put with nutcases, it attacks nutcases. Yeah, yeah, well, there's plenty of nutcases around. Fascinating yeah. time. Well, listen, Graham, thank you very, thank much, you very indeed much indeed, Graham. for that particular insight mm. yes. into, uh, into mm. the world of running a charity shop. Exactly. So, so, I mean, big business is what he says it is. And, it and, is, yeah. And, and I guess, uh, you know, there's no, because there could be no accident that mm. everywhere you look, yeah. there's suddenly another charity shop. Oh, there's loads. I mean, if you go down Epsom, Epsom High mm. Street, I think there are six. Yeah. And they are they all have very good window displays. Yeah. In the old days they used to just bung all the stuff in, yeah. you know, into a display. They somebody then goes in there professionally, sets up shelves yeah. and puts their ornaments on yeah. and, and they have like these model planes that yeah. they sell and all this kind of so stuff. Have you ever bought anything from one then? Yeah, I have, yeah. What have you bought? Um, well, if I've been furnishing yeah. uh, an apartment, you yeah. know, that I've bought to invest in... What do you in, mean, to, to, to put some poor, hapless, uh, you know, well, rental scrounger in? Some, no, some lucky person... Like who the would, Egyptian doctor. Well, something like that. You would go to charity shops to get things like the cutlery and the plates. Really? And all, yeah, of course Why you would. buy new stuff? Well, I don't know. You'd go to charity you'd go to shops... Ikea and, or somewhere. Buy new You'd stuff. go to charity shops, mate, and they'd have it all. I mean, it, it's Shocking. not it's not just cutlery and all that kind of stuff. Plates, it's, you give them second hand plates. Well, no, sometimes. But the the things that, that they're really good at That's are awful. things like vases and uh, you know bowls. Oh yeah. 
and all that so, kind so of stuff. Second hand tat that you put in your slumber pants. I never bought any tat. I've never bought any tat. I, I find that hard to Generally believe. speaking, all new <laughs> stuff, and if not, very, very quality. From a charity shop. Very, very quality, likely used stuff. No, That's no, awful. No, 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 Terrible. it's not. No, it's not. What an insight into the way that you rip people off. But hang on, I'm helping the charity when I do that. Don't you understand? I have a social conscience. Yeah, but you've just, I've just told you. And I like to you. exercise my social I've conscience. I've just told you, it doesn't go to the charity. Yeah, it well. Goes, it goes to the running of the guy with the Bentley. Well, some of it has to go to a charity. Yeah. You hope. Right. You hope. This is Talk Sport. Yep. Do you come from a land down under? A women go and men wonder. Can't you hear, can't you hear the thunder? You better run, you better take cover. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and that music can only mean one thing, of course. It is time to speak to our very, very favourite Australian. It is Ms. Sandra Lee. Sandra, Indeed. very good morning to you. Welcome. Good day, chaps, and thank you for having me on. Not well, at all. And I suppose great it's, to it's, hear from it's, you again. Uh, permissible to wish you a happy Easter, technically, because you're already well into Maundy Thursday, aren't you? We are indeed. We're um, almost halfway through it. Yeah, right. Mm. So mm. Good Friday coming up. Uh, what's the big? Uh, what's the big sort of Easter plan for the weekend? The big Easter plan for my weekend is uh, my husband and my dog and I are all driving down to Melbourne to spend some time with my father. Oh, so right. And how long's the drive? Isn't that it's quite a long way away? Yeah, it's about an eight-hour drive. Eight oh, blimey, yeah, it is wow. a long way, isn't it? Yeah. Porky wouldn't be able to sustain an eight-hour drive, would you well, just keep stopping? Well, I mean, everybody would stop, wouldn't you, Sandra? Else you'd get cramp in uh, eight hours in a car. <laughs> Not in my car. <laughs> Sorry? you get cramp in your car. No, no, you get cramp in, in your car. I mean, um, in Australia, where obviously you live, Sandra, I mean, they do, in this country, we have called motorway service stations. In your country, it's a bit more than that, isn't it? Because it can be quite desperate if your car breaks down in those sort of conditions. Yeah, well, we have quite a lot of them as well in the main areas, but uh, you're, you're right. Across the Nullarbor and a part of um, the interior of the country, yeah. if you're not prepared, you are going to be in big, big trouble. Yeah, sure. No. And do they sort of give you, um, if you if you were to get into trouble, do mm. they then fine you for having to come out and rescue you or something like that if you're like, stuck in the outback? Yeah, they charge you a, like a wounded bull. Yeah. They don't fine you, but they but they do charge, and it's serious money because sometimes they've even had to send out helicopters to search for people. There's yeah. been a lot of incidences where tourists have followed their sat nav into places that don't actually exist because you know they've got the wrong information on it, and they just yeah. get lost or they get bogged in in sand and um, sort of creeks. It's uh, it can be quite a problem. Oh no, I and I fully support charging people because as you know, in this country, in the UK, all these mad nutters go walking up things like the mountains in Scotland, you know, Ben Nevis and all those sort of full-on places. And then when they get stuck at the top, mm. somebody has to go out and rescue them. And you're putting the, you're putting the lives of the rescuers at risk as well as the, uh, the lives of the people who are so incompetent as not to be able to find their way down a mountain. So I'm, I'm all for charging them. <laughs> No, I am. I'm, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, I totally yeah, I'm agree. I'm with you completely because they're, they're, they're not only incompetent, they're incredibly selfish. That's right, they are. They just do it for themselves. Now, may I ask you, Sandra, a strange question, but are you a fan of Manuka honey? Yes, I am. I love it. Right, OK. So I have learned from my spies in the Southern Hemisphere... The New Zealand government has tested 800 samples of honey from around the world to establish a scientific definition of genuine Manuka honey and to crack down on fakes. What is Manuka honey? Well, perhaps you could explain, Sandra. Well, Manuka honey is a special type of honey that is pollinated by a certain kind of bee on a certain kind of plant. Right. So it's 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 very it is very scientific and it's got massive um, medicinal properties. Mm -hmm. So people actually uh, use manuka honey on wounds. Yeah. Uh, I've got a friend who just had a dog. Uh, the dog was attacked and he used the um, money the honey on the dog wound and the dog bite and it cleaned it up in about ten days. It was amazing. Right. Wow. And is it? I mean, sorry to sound thick here, but I mean, is it from yeah, you a do particular? Sound thick, yeah. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, not compared to you, though. Hey. I, mean, I mean, you make me look like uh, Albert Einstein. Listen, here, just get know? on with it. Oh, I'll just get on with it. So, I mean, are they different? Are they special bees that are producing this honey? Well, it's certain bees that go to a the certain plant. It's actually the um, the way it's been pollinated on the plant. Mm. Okay. I'm not a scientist, so I can't give you the full no. bottle and um, the it, bottle on it. But it is it's a healing. It is a healing honey. And if you've ever got a cold or a flu coming on, pop that in the glass of lemon and wow. hot water and 
Bob's your uncle. And is it one of these? Because I've, I mean, I've seen local honey yes. like down in Sussex, for example, in these farm shops. That's right. Where you buy a tiny little jar mm, for about thirteen mm. quid. Yeah. Is it like ridiculously expensive then? Oh yeah, it is, and it, there's various grades of it. It starts from a grade five, and yeah. then it goes all the way up to a grade fifty. And the more, the higher the grade, the more expensive it is. Some of them charge about eighty-five dollars really? for you know just a, a two hundred and fifty gram pot. Wow, wow! And is this exclusive to New Zealand? Then you don't produce it in Australia. Yeah, no, we've got them in Australia as well. Oh, so I see. There's, yeah. Um, yeah. New, New Zealand has it and Australia has it. And it's it's now one of the big exports. It gets exported all around the world. Well, I'm reading that. The exports to Britain, China and other countries is expected to reach something in excess of $400 million uh, next year. That's quite a lot. Of, yeah. that's, I mean, that, I've heard of it. I've yeah. just not, I don't think I've need, ever seen it anywhere. Need, I need to get to a honey farm quick and uh, start investing because it sounds to me like it's... Uh, I think it's, you may have missed the boat on that it, one. It's a very good idea, eh? I think you may have missed the boat. <laughs> Why? Well, you're going to start... Not investing in it. It's already a mani- massively big business. Which uh, is already established. You, see, you see, you don't understand, Mike. You mm. don't know how to handle money. You've got to spot. Right? You've got to spot the opportunity. Yeah, okay? I know, but I'm saying the opportunity's already passed you by. No, no, I've just spotted the opportunity. No, you you didn't even know it. what manuka honey was. Yeah, I did. I so, told you, you know, I'd you're not an it. expert on it, are you? <laughs> I just thought I'd help you out. Now, does uh, Sandra know about this? Uh, this Australian uh, people who are going to invest in football in this country? Well, she may do. There's a story here, Sandra, about a troubled club, football club here called Charlton Athletic, here in South London. Very troubled. Um, who have had problems with their owners and problems with their players and managers and all that. There's word that uh, that uh, there's an Australian consortium putting together a bid to possibly buy it. Uh, and it's going to be headed up by Mark Schwartzer, who's an Australian footballer who used to play here for, uh, I think, Leicester and, and for uh, Chelsea, no? Yes, it's absolutely right. They are mm. doing it. I don't know who um, Schwartzer played for because I'm not a big um, football fan. Yeah. However, it, this consortium is um, trying to raise Australian $55 million to buy that club. Wow. And apparently they've, they've done all the financial due diligence on it and they think it's a great idea and they believe that with the um, lucrative media rights arrangements, if yeah. they manage to get to buy this team and get it into the Premier League, yeah. that they'll have a massive return on investment. So that's what they're hoping for. Well, that's the trick, isn't it? If yeah. they'll pull it off. Well, that's the trick. I mean, if they can get this club into the Premier League, then there is a load of money. But if they oh, yeah. can't, yeah. then the money is not quite so big. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, but if they're ambitious no. and they know what they're doing. I mean, that, that they've come from all over the world to uh, to the UK, Sandra, to buy clubs. And, for instance, we were only reading yesterday that... Um, uh, Stan Kroenke, who uh, who bought Arsenal, has doubled his money. So it can be yeah, done. And, right. and, and, and when we're talking about doubling his money, we're talking about 350, 400 million pounds, yeah, you know. Right. So, so it's a very, very lucrative business, the Premier League in this country. It doesn't surprise me Australian businesses are no, looking at it. No, but, but again, it yeah. will depend on whether they can get it up there. I've got a far more interesting question to ask, Sandra, oh, yes? actually, which is more about the sort of the health and welfare of the world, yes. uh, which is all about North Korea. <laughs> Pyongyang, or Pyongyang, as Porky calls it. Are we on and, Pyongyang? And, and uh, what China's up to, because we keep seeing all this stuff about the Russians and Trump, yeah. and China's kind of, everybody's taking their eye off China slightly. What what are you seeing, because you're a bit nearer that part of the world, what are you seeing from where you are? Yeah, well, that's exactly right. Everyone's worried, um, you know, beyond by um, what's going on in North Korea and mm. those crazies over there. And, um, well, the last thing that we've seen about China is that um, they've been, the Premier or the, uh, who is it? Is it the Premier there? I think it is. He's been cozying up with Trump yeah. in America and eating chocolate cake. So yeah. I think Trump's been pushing pushing some pressure his way to the China's Chinese way to um, sort out what's going on on the border of yeah. North Korea. I have let's, to say. Let's hope they do. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, because he, he put out a tweet the other day saying that, you know, if China's not going to sort out North Korea, uh, then we'll do it for them. Mm. And then he sort of signs off the tweet, you know, USA. Mm. And you just think, you know, I'm not quite sure about this. And then tonight he Mm. comes out with a great one where he's talking about the relationship between Russia, making out that it's the worst relationship they've ever had, which I don't believe for a start. But he then says, we'll just see how it goes. Mm. I mean, he's the president of the free world. He's not really supposed to say things like, we'll see how it goes. No, no. It reminds me of... Uh, I'm well, asking Sandra, actually. S- sorry, opinion. yeah, so I thought she'd answered. Sorry, Sandra, yeah. I thought she'd Please go on. Yeah. Hers is the slightly higher voice, which is with an yeah. Australian accent. Yeah, that's absolutely Just right. For guidance. That's absolutely right. Sorry, Sandra, off you go. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> My head is slightly higher. I'm glad about that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Exactly. But, uh, I, I think Trump, um, you know, I, I, I am never surprised by anything that that man does. He is unpredictable mm. and um, a border, borderline nut. Yeah. In my humble opinion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and I, I think that um, you know, unless there's some serious steady hand 
in the background behind him at the White House and in sort of, you know, the State Department and the Defence Department, you know, who knows what's going to happen in, in the coming months and years. No, it's absolutely true. But I was going to say, when we used to all work in America together, I remember that famous documentary, George H. Bush, you know, put together this piece to try and promote his chances against um, Bill Clinton. And it was incredible. They they were all in the White House yeah. there, and the guy said, you know, hey, Mr. President, uh, you know, the Secret Service keeping you in touch with what's going on in Iraq. He said, well, not as much as CNN is, because <laughs> that's all he was doing. <laughs> yeah, right. Sitting in the Oval Office all day watching CNN. Well, that was the first war of the yeah. CNN war, wasn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. And people were astonished yeah. at the fact that they could just sit somewhere and watch the whole thing as, it, as it unfolded. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's right, and that, that, was, that was the making of CNN. Of course it was, yeah, that's right. Old Ted Turner became the richest man in the world, didn't he? And decided that it'd be good to have a trophy wife, so went off and married Jane Fonda, didn't he? He did indeed. Yeah, it didn't last, think, though. I don't think it lasted. It lasted longer <laughs> than a lot of people thought it would, though. Well, yeah, it did, yeah. Yeah, but considering they lived on a, an estate in Montana, which is bigger than Wales, it wasn't surprising they didn't see much of each other. Uh, no, quite. No, quite. Mm. So what else has been going on? What news on the kangaroo front or uh, the sort of... Uh, the, mad alligators. The mad alligators, sharks, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 all those well, sort well, of things. Uh, there, there have been no shark attacks, no croc attacks lately, and oh, no spider bites. So, <laughs> oh, so and, and is your spider still? Bruised. is your spider still in the house or is it gone? It's long, long gone. I haven't seen it for weeks now. In fact, the last yeah. time we spoke, it had sort of done a done a runner. It found better digs elsewhere, so I'm not sure where mm. it's gone. Oh, Thank okay. okay. Well, right. As long as it has gone, <laughs> that's, that's all you need to well, know. Well, listen, have a fantastic Easter. Yeah, Sandra, have a great Easter, a really great one. And uh, please send our best wishes to your dad. Um, wish him well, and uh, we'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you very much, and happy Easter and happy Passover. Indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Sandra Lee there mm. uh, giving us uh, the best of all worlds from yep. down in Australia. We've got yep. loads and loads of stuff coming up. Certainly uh, have. Uh, CC says this, the charity industry is just one big scam. It's mm-hmm. very sad, really, mm. as probably only 1% to 5% makes it through uh, to the cause. And Gareth says, they send people who are on job seekers to work placements to charity shops, not volunteering. If you don't go, you don't get dull. So he's saying that some of the uh, job centres really? are sending people to, uh, to charity shops. We'll bring you more of that uh, coming up a little bit later on as well. This is TalkSport. Jackson fight for you. Yeah, I know. I mean, I suppose a lot on their success is going to depend upon how much money they've got to hire a decent band to be the backing band. I, for I them. suppose you're right. Yeah, yeah. because they, they won't have any of the original musicians, will no. they? You know, they'll have gone off and done other things elsewhere. No, exactly. uh, Over the years, exactly. Great song though. I, the first one I remember was ABC. Yeah. ABC, Simple it's as, easy as one, two, as three. I've still got it, actually. It still comes on my, uh, on my, uh, in the car, yeah. Really? Yeah, well, I've got, I mean, I've got, like, a couple of thousand songs ABC, that I just, just keep revolving. that's how easy it can yeah. be. Yeah, you don't have to sing do, the whole do, thing. Do, do, do. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, now then. Um, I've got a couple of things to ask you about. Okay. Have you seen the pictures in the papers today about uh, Ross Barkley and his cuts and bruises? I have, yeah. Spotted for the first time since his bar bust up. Indeed. Uh, wearing sunglasses when he arrived for training. Yes. And apparently the police are still investigating the story. He's been quite noble about about that, don't you think? Noble? Yeah. How do you mean? Well, in the sense that he's not reported it to the police and he's right. not tried to make a big deal of it and he's not played the old superstar footballer, you can't, you know, attack me and all that kind of stuff. Well, maybe he's got something to hide. Um, I think it's far more likely that in the sort of code of honour amongst, uh, you know, men of that age in Liverpool, mm. they've just decided that, uh, you know, well, you don't do that sort of glass. thing. Well, yeah, maybe. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah, well, it don't... might be a mate of his that punched him. Doesn't, yeah, want, no. to t- doesn't want to talk to the busies, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, like, you know. Well, that's not exactly setting a great example for the community. <laughs> yeah, it? well, I, well, I don't know. Grass. I mean, it's the way they work things out. Yeah, right. Now, um, you were telling me earlier about a mutual colleague of ours Indeed. who sadly has passed on. Dennis Cassidy, right? Now, uh, I knew Dennis very well. Yeah, he's 81 years of age, and uh, he yeah. basically started a company called Cassidy and Lee. That's right. Which, for those of you who don't know what that is, was a very famous news agency. Yes. Because around the country, and I'm only saying this not to you, but to the people who don't know, um, there are different news agencies in different areas which are specialists in that particular area. And in the old days of Fleet Street, you used to use them to not only recruit young journalists, but to get information on stories which were happening in their patch and all that. I mean, it was a massive business. 
and slightly changed now, I suppose. It because has of changed, the way yeah. The media has changed, but but most of them are still going in one way or another. They, they are. I mean, for instance, you sent me an obituary, and I noticed it's written by a chap called Chris Johnson. Yeah. Now, Chris ran Mercury in Liverpool, right. and I presume he still does. And Mercury was years. very successful, actually, oh, wasn't it? Well, crikey. I mean, you know, during the things like the Toxteth riots mm. and all that kind of stuff, they'd right. have, like, you know... 12 or 15 people on the ground. Yeah. You know, they, they, these were big. Southwest News in Bristol, do you remember? Southwest News, absolutely. That, that was a, a, a very big White's one. Whites up in Sheffield. White Sheffield, Solent down in Southampton. Yeah. And, and uh, Cassidy and Lee were based in Guildford. Yeah. But they moved out, actually, to a smaller town uh, where the tunnel runs through on the A3. You went through it the other night. That's right. Uh, the Godalming, what, that sort of way? Uh, yeah, that, that sort of way. But it's not actually Godalming. But anyway, the point is that Dennis has died at 81. Now, what Dennis did was he realised that uh, you needed a bit of solidarity against the might of Fleet Street mm. because what Fleet Street would often do is, uh, and you and I must have been guilty of it, I yeah. mean, I was a news editor for five years and I was processing these uh, these invoices all the time, you always wanted to pay them less than they were claiming yes. for the stories right. because you only had a set budget. Although there was a bit of a game that went on, wasn't there? Because, yeah, I mean, all the they time. Would, they would read the story in the paper and sometimes more than one agency would file on yeah. a particular story yeah. and they would say, that's our copy, yeah. and you would say, no, it isn't. It's from and somewhere in the end, else sometimes like it was that. easy to pay yeah. them than it was to argue with them. Yeah, and anyway, that all went on. So what Dennis did was he started an organisation with people like Chris Johnson from Mercury yeah. and... I uh, can't remember who ran Southwest News now. I think it was a few of them over the years. Well, it was but, uh, it was Ted Young's son, wasn't oh, it? Oh, that's right. It was, yeah. Sid. Um, Sid Young's son. Sid Young's son. Sid Young's son, that's which right. I think was, was it Ted Young? Uh, I'm not... Uh, no, it, Sid Young's son, but it wasn't Ted. But anyway, the yeah. uh, point of the story is, and he, he formed an organisation called NAPA, National Association yes. of Press Agencies. Yes. So I got invited as a chief guest uh, one year right. to their dinner, yeah. which was in, uh, I think it was in Guildford, actually, because mm. Dennis was the, the president, you know. So I go down there, check in a hotel and all mm. that, you know, go down there and... Uh, and know, they were always quite good hosts, weren't they? Oh, they're very good hosts, yeah. But there was a difference between the sort of organisations that Dennis ran and these guys who were like one-man agencies in Northampton, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. So anyway, so uh, I go down, you know, I dress the you know, floor and I, you know, you're all doing a brilliant job, well done, that kind of yeah. stuff. I'm just about to sit down when... The bloke from the one-man agency in Northampton gets up and swears at me. You know, he doesn't you know, a drink. It's a very bizarre thing, this. Yeah. I'm going to let you finish the <laughs> story. Right, yeah. I had a very similar right, thing right. happen to me, but right. I'll tell you later. Yeah. So, so he, <laughs> he, he was intoxicated, you know, and he swears at me. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I said, who was that? He said, it's me. I said, what's your problem? Dennis said, oh, no, come on, Fred, or whatever yeah, his yeah. name was. You know, no, never mind, not Dennis. You're sitting next to that ponch, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, all this and then it was all about money. Yeah. It was all about, you know, you never pay us, you don't pay us enough. And all he was ripping us off. And then about half a dozen others suddenly got up yeah. and started... Empowered yeah, by the drink. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. yeah you know, you... This is bizarre, because I, I had the exact same experience, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, in Edinburgh, right, funnily enough, yeah. when I was running the mirror. Yeah. Um, and I thought rather foolishly, mm, mm. as I'm sure you did, yeah. that I was being invited as a result of my incredible sort of uh, knowledge of the Fleet Street business so, and also yeah. my, my charm and wit and all the rest of it. I thought they were going to greet me as a giant yeah. at Fleet Street, you yeah. know what I mean, and stand in awe of me. They in didn't, fact, they, they, they were invited no. you into the lion's den. Exactly. Me. So I so after taking about three or four minutes of insults from two or three guys, I started hitting back. Right. So it became a right old shouting yeah, match, yeah. you know, with Dennis trying to get in the middle. And yeah. then I'd turn and say, you old buffoon, yeah, sit yeah. down and all this kind of stuff, yeah. you know. Quite right. And, uh, yeah. And um, But anyway, the, the strangest thing was... Mm. At the end of the night, you know, when a lot more drink had been taken, mm. it was all, you know, oh, you know, well, you know, I didn't mean it personally, oh, you yeah. know, and all well, that. Oh, because they terrified you're going to blackboard Yeah, yeah, them. exactly, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, the point is, uh, earlier that evening, when I met Dave, uh, I'd met Dennis in the hotel. Yeah. It was a nice hotel, I don't know what it was called, and all that. He'd actually picked up a story in the bar. Right. He was sitting at the bar waiting for me. They were terrific at that, though, weren't the, they? They were, and... Uh, and I came in, I said hello to him, and he, and he indicated to me to shut up. Yeah. And he was actually earwigging a conversation to his left between two blokes over a crooked property deal. Oh, right. And the story eventually appeared in print in the Daily Mail. Mm. It was amazing, yeah. you know. And that's, I mean, much as you and I applied ourselves for jobs in those days, you'd never have found me able to, you know, concentrate long enough no. in a bar listening to somebody's conversation to no. pick up a story from it, you no, know. exactly right. But, but he, he, was a, he was a smashing bloke and he was a very genuine, honest man. And, uh, and as you quite rightly say, 
gave a lot of young journalists uh, a great deal of help to make their careers. A leg up in life. And reading the obituary that you were referring to yeah. there in the Press Gazette, um, yeah. just to give people an idea of some of the newspapers and and, and, and sort of periodicals that he worked on. Yes. Um, following his national service in the RAF, he began his career on the Earlham Guardian. Which is just outside Manchester. Moved yeah. to the Sheffield Star, where yeah. he famously fixed it for his pal Michael Parkinson mm. to land a date with Mary, yeah. his wife-to-be. Yes. He then moved on to the Empire News, yeah. uh, which was a Manchester broadsheet yeah. uh, that sold on Saturday night. Tell Sunday you what, morning. I don't even remember that. Sunday, even P- I don't Sunday remember Pictorial, that. which became the Sunday Mirror. That's right. Um, and then, uh, of course, he opened in 1961 the Castle and Lee Agency. With, in 1961? With, with Don Lee, yeah. God, blimey. And he was brought back, funnily enough, mm. uh, to uh, to Fleet Street in later on in the 60s to yes. work on the Sunday People Yes. Uh, on all sorts of investigations. And uh, funnily enough, I knew a guy mm. um, who used to... There was a guy called Laurie Manifold, I don't know if you remember him, who used to run a lot of the Sunday People investigations when it was still a proper yes, paper. Yes, that's right, yeah. He actually used to do some quite good work. Mm. Uh, and according to this piece, mm. several people, including Greg Dyke, yeah. uh, were former Cassidy and Lee employees. That's right, yeah. So there you go. And uh, Harry Aspie, one time managing under the Press Association, yeah. who I got to know uh, later in life. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, that happened quite a lot, actually, because there was also a news agency down in Dartford, in Kent, called yes, Ferraris. there was indeed. And that was the family of Nick Ferrari, yeah. who is the current, I think he's broadcast on LBC. LBC Breakfast guy. LBC yeah. Breakfast, that's right. And his father, Dan good Ferrari. Good friend of ours. Yeah, very good friend of ours. And his father, Dan Ferrari, um, created that agency. And there were guys there who I'd meet in the Sunday Mirror on a Saturday, because I used to do like a freelance shift on a Saturday at the Sunday Mirror when I worked for the Birmingham Mail in London. And these guys ran their own news agencies during the week, but would work in there on a Sunday because they had so much, in the mm. way, of contacts yeah, you know, right. around the country and yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, and it was a... It was a very big business. And also, they business. were the first... I mean, one of the things when I did my sort of um, yeah. um, the baptism of fire with them when I went to that uh, dinner, yes, um, they were basically beginning to branch out into different things like video. Yeah. They were doing online stuff. Before, some, some before of, the newspapers had kind of picked up on how to do it. You know? and, and some of them actually specialised exclusively in features. Yes. They'd go after big buy-ups yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Right. You know, There was a guy who used to be the news editor of the Mirror uh-huh. who went off and did that. I think he, I think he did. Was it Peter or somebody? Lee. No, it wasn't Peter. It was... Uh, I can't remember. I can see his face now. Mm. He, he famously... Wasn't the guy that famously had the ski resort. No, it wasn't a guy who had the ski resort. Famously, Ted Oliver, yeah. who worked for the Mirror but then went on to work for the Mail... Yeah. Uh, whose you know, nose was bitten by uh, Vinnie, Vinnie Jones. Jones. Yeah. Um, you know the like all the Beijing massacre stuff, the tanks yeah. in Beijing. Yeah, Tiananmen you know, Square. Tian- Tiananmen Square. Yeah. Uh, Ted eventually got into Beijing. <laughs> I remember, you know. Yeah. And he'd always thought his news editor was a bit of a thickhead, you know, who didn't really appreciate the way the world worked. Right. And so it took Ted three days to get there. Eventually got in. He got into a hotel. He managed to ring. And uh, got him at home, you know, and uh, I'm trying to remember this guy's name. I will in a minute. And Ted, you know, he was a very bright yeah. man from Northern Ireland. Yeah. You, you know, um, Peter, it's uh, Ted here. I've you got in, I'm right. in the hotel. And, and where exactly are you, Ted? Yeah. I'm in Beijing. Right. Right, OK. And how long will it take you now to get to Peking? Right. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. yeah. One well, of know. those great yeah, ones, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm. Tremendous. Yeah. Now, I must point out to you that mm. uh, having just spoken to Sandra Lee down in Australia, yes. uh, Becky says she's listening live with, to the two mites with the start of Cyclone Cook bearing down. Worst weather yet to come Ooh. in the next four hours. Yeah. And there's a picture of that. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. Look at mm. that cyclone picture. Yeah, but that's a meteorological picture. You no, don't actually see that in the sky, do you? No, I know you don't see it in the no. sky. So but what I mean, are you showing me for then? Because it's a it's a weather picture, right? Yeah, that's and what it's, I mean. incredibly... it's a weather map picture, so yeah, it doesn't mean anything, does it? No, it means a lot. You can see the right. centre of the storm, no, you can't. and it's got all sorts of gr- green and blue it swirls. Like a, it looks like a P- Picasso painting. You're hopeless. And, and just as there unintelligible. Is no, there is no pinicular structure on this, yeah. uh, but it, it is going to hurt people. Uh, so if you are in that part of the world, uh, take care. Yes. Because it's a massive cyclone. Yes. Uh, and Becky, I'm sure you'll be all right. His name is Tom. 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 You don't mean Tom Petri? Yeah, Tom Petri. Not the son? No, no, that's... No, no, Tom Hendry. Oh, Tom, Tom Hendry. Hendry. I know Tom Hendry. Tom Hendry. Hendry. Yes, I remember very him very Very sallow-faced well. individual. Did he not go to work in the place at Reading? Yeah, he did, yeah. He did, yeah. It was Reading, wasn't, wasn't it? Wasn't it? it was Reading, yeah, it was wasn't it? Reading. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. But yeah. I can't remember the name of it. But no, I remember I the guy. Yeah. He used to come into the mirror every Monday. Oh, that's right. Uh, to have lunch with various people. Oh, I see, yeah. And basically yeah. try and find Try and way. fog him a few uh, yeah. features and, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It was indeed the case. Uh, mm. This is Talk Sport. Coming up in the next hour, Porky Vision is going to be here.
Now, I've been sent this by somebody who's obviously a fan of the Queen. Anthony says this. How about this? Amazing lady, amazing mm. statistic. And mm. it says, uh, the Spectator Index, the Queen Elizabeth has ruled the United Kingdom for over a quarter of the time the United States has been a country. Right, really? Isn't that incredible? That is incredible, yeah. Mm. Absolutely incredible. So I suppose if you work it out, that, yeah. would be, uh, that would be quite a remarkable statistic. Yeah, I don't know how... Uh... I can't get your head around that, really, can you? Well, I mean, if you consider that America's been a country since 1776... That's right. ..I suppose. Yes. Right, so that's 1876, 1976. Yeah, it is, yeah. um, it's about 250-odd years, That's isn't right, it? yeah. Um, she's been, for a quarter of that period... Yes. Uh, ..running Britain. Over 60 years, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's about right. Absolutely amazing. Something to be deeply proud of, in my view. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now then, um, tell me what I was going to talk to you about. I don't know. Because, uh, you know, I have a lot of issues. Well, that, I've got uh, to talk to you about Wayne Rooney, actually. But oh, we yeah, can get on, to that yeah. a bit later on. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, the, the, the suggestion, and I was saying this, and I would like you yeah. to re- remember, of course, mm. that I did say this one uh, some, some time ago. Yes. That when he was dropped from the England team, and Gareth Southgate said, oh, yeah, mm. well, he can get into the next one. You know, he hasn't been dropped for any particular reason. Yeah. That I said, no, he's fit to play, but, or he's fit to be selected, but he's yeah. not playing because yeah. he's, he's finished. Yeah. And he's probably finished at Manchester United as well. People are now saying he may never play for Manchester United again. He's been dropped from the team tonight to play mm. Anderlecht in mm. the Europa League. Mm. Um, some people say, is that because he's being held up so that he can play against Chelsea at the weekend? Probably not. Yeah. Um, and the belief is that Jose Mourinho is forcing him out. Well, in... Yes, sort of, but I think it's more like fading him out rather than forcing him out, if you see what I mean. You know what I mean? Um, Kind of just just making him aware that he's not really very welcome there anymore. Yeah, but I mean, it's a bit of an ignominious way for his career to end in Britain. It sure is, it? sure is. For a guy who's done all the things that he's done, and I know that you're a big fan of his. Yeah, and, of course and, I am, yeah. Not everybody agrees mm, that, mm. that he's as good as, as you say he is, but I mean, yeah. it's just a bit sad, really, isn't it? It is, yeah. Now, I'll tell you what I want to talk to you about. This new tunnel that's going to go under the uh, River Thames, isn't it brilliant? A new tunnel. A new tunnel. We're what going to build tunnel? a new tunnel. I thought we were talking about Wayne Rooney. Hey, I thought we were talking about Wayne Rooney. We finished talking about Wayne Rooney. We finished, have we? Yeah. So that's it then. Well, what else so is the there fact to say? That you've written a book about Wayne Rooney. Yes. And the fact you're still trying to flog the arse out of that. No, no. And, and uh, you're not thinking about doing a new chapter on the end of Wayne Rooney. I'm Why wouldn't you do that? I'm thinking because Wayne Rooney is at the point in his career he is now. Yeah. I may even put that book on audio. Really? Mm. On audio? On audio. <laughs> Sorry, what do you find so amusing? What would be the point of that? What do Pe- you mean on audio? Well, people would be able to buy... What, are you reading the book? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, what's, what's your problem? Great idea. Why? Yeah. Why? I'll put, me up, put me up for ten copies. Uh, yes. I, mean, I can't imagine anything worse than hearing you uh, sl- putting me off to my slumbers. You know, oh, really? In the middle of the night. Really? I'll just put Mike Parry's audio book on. Yeah, that's Not right. only do I have to, you know, reread it mm. and remember the mm. rubbish in it that's in it, you know, it's you talk, talking endlessly See, about that's you. It's very rude and. Well, uh, no, you've been talking endlessly about insulting. you. No, no. No, all I'd do is read the words of the book, which has, you know, been. Yeah, Wayne, how Wayne Rooney saved my life, about 3,000 words of it. Well, I'm sorry, but that's part of the Wayne Rooney story. Is it? That book was for sale in W.H. Smith, uh-huh. it was for sale in the other uh, now, bookshop chain. Now found in all good charity shops. No. It, it, it has appeared in the odd charity shop, but then or that's because people have bought it for £18.99, read it, and then donated it to a charity yeah. shop to raise money for charity. What's unusual about that? How about this? Ernie says, I hear charity shops are doing very well in second hand chairs with broken springs. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got my chair back, thank yeah. you very much indeed. And nobody's getting a picture of it because I'm afraid that, you know, I got so much abuse last time, I won't be doing it again. <laughs> I've got other. I think re- people want to see the new chair and see what it looks like. Well, it looks like the old chair, but it hasn't got a broken spring well, sticking so, out the bottom. So, has he, has he put a new sort of um, uh, piece of material over the bottom then? Well, the, not only that, he took all the springs out in case the others were, you know, getting to the point where dodgy. they were going to fail as yeah. well. Replaced them all. OK. And then replaced, as you quite rightly say, the padding and the, and the, uh, the cloth well, beneath the chair. Look, does it look any different? Well, I, I haven't turned it upside down and looked. I don't oh. need to. I sit on the top of it, not the bottom of it, OK? Oh, hang on. So you didn't even check to see what the guy had done? No, of course not. How could you see what the guy's done? He's put a piece of material oh. over it. What he's going to do say, right, take that material off. I want to inspect the springs you put in. Well, actually... He's a professional upholsterer. Well, you don't know who he is, do well, you? Well, I do now know he's a professional upholsterer. What's his name? Hey? What's his name? <laughs> that doesn't matter. You don't know his name, do you? Funny enough, he arrived in a van. Yeah. <laughs> yeah which said... <laughs> some, I mean, said something like... What was it? No, it was... Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, yeah. It had the name of a... boy. No, no, no. It had the name of a of a motorcycle racing team on the side. Hey? So I didn't even realise it motorcycle was... Motorcycle racing yeah, team? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. No, he did, yeah. And, and so... So I... it wasn't even his van. 
I didn't I didn't know what it was doing parked there. And yeah. then all of a sudden, I saw these two blokes open the back door and yeah. get out with a chair. Right. I mean, it was quite amazing. Really. It was my chair. It was your chair. Yeah, it was my chair, yeah. Very yeah. odd, this. Amazing. Very amazing. strange. How much did he charge you? Uh, very reasonable. How much? I'm I'm not going to say. You but are, it was very it's a reasonable. lot of money, isn't it? No, no. More than a hundred quid. No, no. It was very reasonable. Was honestly. it less than a hundred quid? It it was around that figure, but it was very reasonable. <laughs> it's very reasonable, honestly. He saw you coming. No, no. To replace a spring. Well, and, one and spring, he's charged you one hundred and fifty quid, hasn't no, he? No, no, no. It's a, it's a lot of work, and 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 remember, well, he's had it for about three weeks. For a rare skill, you have to pay, you know, more. He's premium. probably been rent- renting it out for a wedding or something. No, 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 chair. not at all, not at all. It's, it's, uh, so have you sat on it then? I have. And is it uh, feeling like it used to feel? It feels better. Does it? feels better springed right. and more resilient. OK, you know? I'm very happy for you. So I can sort of, you know, flop into it, you know, when I'm <laughs> exhausted, you know what I mean? It doesn't You're never go exhausted, boing. are you? No. But anyway, listen, yeah. so what do you think about the new tunnel under the uh, Thames, about, isn't it brilliant? I, no, I don't know about this Right, tunnel. one of the country's longest road tunnels will be built to ease traffic jams in the most congested corner of Britain. Oh, yeah. The Department for Transport will unveil plans for a two-mile-long tunnel under the River Thames to take millions of cars and lorries off the M25 mm. at one of its busiest stretches. This is, is wonderful news. Is it going to be news. underneath the Dartford Crossing, then? Is it's it going to be, be next to. It's going to be next to. Because there's already a tunnel there, right? Yes, well, there's a tunnel and a bridge, obviously. Yeah. It is expected the government will offer a link to the east of the existing Dartford Crossing. Right. North, south, that's further out to sea. Further out okay. to sea, further yeah. down the estuary. That's right. So it'll be very wider then. Uh, of the Thames, uh, east of London, the first uh, tunnel in 26... First crossing uh, across the Thames in 26 years. Yeah, but you know how long it's going to take to build that. I mean, it'll take about 50 years. No, it won't. It says, Highways England's proposed the tunnel and new road should be built to connect the M2 in Kent, yeah. right, which you use, don't you? Not really, not no. unless I have to. Right, with Tilbury in Essex, yeah. and the cost will be £5.9 billion. Pounds. Yeah, but when are they going to finish it, though? Well, it says when, it is, uh, when it's completed, yeah. it's expected it'll be the joint longest in the country. Yeah, but it, we don't know about all that, but one one Alongside the Queensway Tunnel under the Mersey. When will I be able to use it, is what I want to know. Uh, will I be dead already? What? I bet I'll be dead already. Because they take too long to build these well, things. Well, they do If sometimes. it was in China, they'd have built it in about a week. Uh, yeah, I agree. Mm. So it says uh, also, this is another also. This is another great uh, development. Yeah. In fact, this is even more spectacular. Mm. Uh, there is a plan now to build a tunnel underneath the Pennines, which I've been demanding for years. Why? Well, because the 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 uh, transport links between east and west in this country are a disgrace. The only one we've got is the M62, and we only had right. that in the sort of seventies or eighties. Before that, you had to go well, through Snake Pass, which Snake used to be full Pass. of snow even in sort of May. You're not sure about Shap Fell, are you? No, I'm talking about Snake Pass. Snake Pass. Yeah, where does a, that go? Well, it goes from Cheshire yeah. through Derbyshire into right. Sheffield and Yorkshire. Okay, and yeah. uh, and it was constantly. Does anybody go there? Well, they don't now because of the M62. But yeah. we, we used to get the uh, we used to get the coach to when we were playing Leeds or Sheffield Wednesday, uh-huh. Leeds United or Sheffield Wednesday. We used to get the coach. And it often used to get bogged down in snow, and that would be in like August and yeah. May. You know, it was so bad. Okay. Yeah. So they're building a tunnel under the Pennines. Nineteen miles. Yeah. So Isn't where's that, that going to go from Sheffield to, to Manchester or something? Well, I would imagine so, wouldn't you? I mean, well, I guess. I don't well, know. that's where the M62 goes. Maybe yeah. a bit higher up. Mm. A bit higher up. You know. But the trouble is, and I mean, I'm all in favour of, of, of these projects and road uh, improvements, etc. Yes. The problem is, is that they do take an awfully long time. As I've said to you, the, 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 the sort of the dual carriageway-isation mm. of the A21 mm. was meant to be finished last Christmas. Yes. Right? Yeah. And in fact, it was last summer it was meant to be finished. I think it was Christmas before. Yeah. And it's now overrun by about two years. Right. And it shows no sign of being finished. Yeah, well... And it's an absolute disgrace. Well, anything politicians do is always over budget and very late. And very late. Completed. Yeah, but for some reason, our country seems particularly bad at yeah. building anything road-wise. You well, know? you say that. I mean, when the M25, when they finished it, yeah. was already obsolete. Yes, you know, it didn't have enough lanes. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't well enough made. It yeah. was already. But that happens be... all the time. The point yeah, is, but it shouldn't though. Point is, we need thousands of miles more roads in this country. Roads don't take up any space. They don't take up any space. Well, at they take up space. <laughs> they don't. They, they don't. take up loads of space. They, they take up very little, very little space. Honestly. I mean, a tunnel doesn't take up so much space, no. but a road does. Well, listen, 
I got on a train the other day going north yeah. to uh, Liverpool yes. and Chester. Birkenhead. Yeah, and for the majority of that journey, all I could see on the right and left of the railway mm. track were green fields. Yeah. Seriously? It's called the Green Belt. Uh, yeah, OK. Well, you can build roads through those without taking up much land at all. Believe me, you can. And then we could... What we no, need you is... Can't. you can't just build roads through the countryside. Yes, you can. No. And you, you should. No. No, incorrect. you should. No, because you'll turn it into a wasteland that no, looks like America. No, we've got to improve the economy no. by having better transport do remember, links. Do you remember what America looks like? Yeah, of course I remember. America, America looks, looks like. like an absolute disaster in most parts of the country. Don't agree. In LA, they said the car is king, and therefore we'll have 12 and 16 lane wide yeah. uh, highways it's a disgrace. and freeways. No, it's not. It's, because, it's the right thing to do. No, it's not, because there is still... Because what happens when you yeah. build more roads yeah. is that you just get bigger areas of Good. congestion. Good, Good. You need more cars to get no. let uh, people no. move around Nobody to improve does, the economy. Have you ever been on the Santa Barbara, uh, Santa Monica freeway at yeah. 5 o'clock in the afternoon? Yes, I have, yes. It's all 16 lanes. Trying to get to the airport, full. yeah. You can't get anywhere. Yeah, I know. Uh, what if I was you build gonna... another 16 lanes, that would also be jammed. No, no, we need more and more roads because no. then people can get around more and more and they've got the freedom to uh, move around on their own without having to, you know, pile into... Absolute rubbish. ...congested and, 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 and uh, unworkable trains. You've I'm telling you. No, no, I'm not, I'm not. I want more and more roads built all over the place all the time. It's the only way to improve the economy. Is that what you think? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. As yeah. A, a note here on your uh, Wayne Rooney thing. It's yes. saying it would be a great way to cry yourself to sleep listening to your audio book. Uh, and which ignoramus has written that? Uh, I can't find the actual no, tweet right no, now. No, no, well, okay. So you just made it up, in no, fact. I made, yeah. No, I don't make up tweets. Yeah. You're the one that makes up tweets. No, you just I made will... it up because no. you can't produce it. No, you... I will be able to produce so it. another, you know, stinging comment which you think is going to upset me, but it doesn't. Because oh, here it is. I, I, I don't know, care look, I about found it. it. Uh, it's from Brunton. Brunton. A Mike Perry audio book, the perfect way to cry yourself to sleep. There, yeah. I've had to read it twice now. Oh, yeah, you had to make it up after you'd uh, invented uh, no. it, yes. No, would you like me to retweet it so that everybody knows I haven't made it up? I don't care whether you retweet it or not. It means nothing to me. To make sure that the mm. Donald Trump of talk sport does not get away with telling lies on oh, air. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is talk sport. <laughs> Williams says, um, I hope they've got wide cycle lanes in these new tunnels. Yeah. I don't know whether they're going to have cycle lanes. No, of course they will have cycle lanes. Well, they, they might a, have. If you had a 19 mile tunnel under the yeah. Pennines, you couldn't put a cycle lane in it. Well, you wouldn't have the, thought so. I see people cycling through tunnels, though. I mean, you go through the Rotherhide mm. tunnel, people cycle through it. Do they? What? On, mean, on the pavement? Yeah, on the pavement. I mean, I don't know why, because it must be one of the most odious and poisonous yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sort of atmospheres that you can possibly put yourself Such into. Such a tiny tunnel, isn't it? It's tiny. It's a yeah. Victorian tunnel. It is, yeah. You know, it was built originally for horses and carts to go through, I think. It was built by Brunel. It was indeed. Yeah. In fact, at the entrance to it on the south side yes. is a massive uh, Brunel um, sort of sculpture with is his name. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. And the Brunel Museum is there. Yeah, and I think about 13 men died in the building of they it. Did. I mean, there were landslides underground right. and when we did the gas quiz on when we did the quiz on Brunel, yeah. that was uh, very much one of the questions that came up. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. Now then, do you ever use an alarm clock to get up in the morning? Uh, no, but I use an alarm on my phone sometimes to wake me. Yeah, okay. I don't actually own an alarm clock. Uh, and have you got any plans for retirement any time soon? <laughs> What is this some kind of questionnaire you're going through? Well, it says here... I, I can't afford to retire. I've, uh, I've no, you can't, children. that's true. Yeah. Well, no, it's not that. It's just that you have so many liabilities. No, I've you? got children to yeah. look after. You know, my so, kids will not be off my hands mm. for about another, I would say, 15 years minimum. You've got a problem. Why? Well, are you going to provide for them? I mean, you'd be well, old I'll and be knackered worried. by then. Well, I won't be old and knackered. Well, you know, you might say I'm old and knackered now. Yeah. But, you know, fortunately, I won't be involving myself in any heavy lifting. Yeah, you'd be more old and knackered. Uh, I'll be then. older, yeah. Yeah. You'll be dead, probably. Yes, I probably will be, actually, yeah. yeah. Now then, uh, so what it says here is, this is, uh, you know, from one of my social affairs uh, journals. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tired Hol- with Weekly. Uh, sorry? Tired with Weekly. <laughs> Why don't you just shut up for a minute, you know, and well, learn tried, something. I've learn tried something. shutting up for a right. minute, but unfortunately right. all I can hear is you babbling away on the other side of the room. Now then, it says, holidays, hobbies and days out are great, yeah. but the best thing about being retired is not having to wake up to an alarm clock, says new research. Well, that's all very well if you don't like waking up. Yeah. But, I mean, I've tried a bit. I mean, I was a student once, but mm. I didn't used to get up very early. Yeah. Um, I've tried not working. Uh, well, you don't have to get up for any reason. Yes. And if you don't get up for any reason, you don't have to get up for any reason. Life soon mm. becomes quite dull, doesn't it? Well, I, I was about to say that. It says, being able to avoid travelling during rush hours and savouring whole days to yourself are also high up on the list of things that make life perfect after work ends. Taking three holidays or mini breaks a year, who can afford that when right. they're retired? Well, exactly. Yeah, taking three holidays or mini breaks a year, eating out a couple of times a month and sharing a good laugh with friends over a drink are further ingredients for a happy retirement as surveys found. Yeah. Now, do you know what that, all that reminds me of? What? Reminds me of one of these ridiculous adverts mm. 
that these companies who sell retirement homes uh, give oh, yeah. you, you know what I mean? With and, a couple playing golf and all yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, oh, gathered on the terrace outside, you know. Yeah, it's life marvellous. It's life marvellous. Yeah. Oh, let's have another, you know, pins and, fact, and all that and kind fact, of stuff. in fact, I've got so much money, I'm able yes. to give it all to my children yeah, yeah. Uh, who have come around scrounging again. You yeah, know. I mean, retirement is death, for basically. Me, for, for it's a living of, death. And for an awful lot of mm, people, mm. and probably the majority of people, it is quite um, poverty-stricken as well. Well, not only that, I think it's impossible. I mm. think it's an impossible uh, ideal these yeah. days, a possible dream. Right. Most people who are still working and heading towards, I don't know, maybe you know your age. You yeah. know, one of these days they'll be sixty. Yeah. Most people are, I can't even see the horizon no. where they'll be able to retire. Not at all. Well, no. lots of people are being told yeah. now that you have to work at least until you're seventy, possibly yes. seventy-five. Yes, as long as you're capable of doing that. I mean, you see um, firemen and policemen yeah. and all these people saying, you know, we can't be working in that kind of environment until we're 75. It's just not possible. I totally agree. Yeah. And the other thing is, I mean, first of all, financially, it doesn't work. It says here, as many as 80% of pensioners are happy with their lot in life. Right. I don't believe that. No. I don't believe that. Most pensioners don't have a great life no. because they, you know, because of the fact they are a pensioner, mm. they will not have invested in private pensions when they were young. No, you know, because when, they when, weren't, when, some, some of them weren't able to. Some weren't able, some didn't have the knowledge yeah. to do it, some didn't have the facility. Yeah. So so I, I really don't agree with that very much. But the, many of them will have lost their, their partner in life. Exactly. You know, and they'll be alone exactly. for the first time in their life when their children will have left the house. That's and, right. You know, they haven't got much to look forward to. No, I totally agree. And, and, and what I'd say is, this idea of, you know, Oh, this carefree life, not having to wake up in the morning. I couldn't bear that. If I wake up any morning and haven't got a clue what I'm going to be doing that day, I get a like a you get a panic attack, don't you? Because mm. there must be something to do. Funny enough, <coughs> did I tell you? Well, I tell you on air. Did I tell you off air? When I was in Chester the other day and yeah. I was and out to see uh, my old school and oh, all yeah. that, you know, and right. then I met a few people as yeah. I said for lunch and that kind of stuff. Mm. We visited a couple. Then you were of, by the river or somewhere. By you? the river, the mm. boathouse. Yeah. Now we visited a couple of pubs around town because we both come from Chester and we've both gone back. If you see what I mean. Right. Uh, just to you know have a look and see what the scene was like compared to what it was like when we were there mm. thirty five years ago. Right. And in each one we went into, there were a group of men aged, or oh, a pensionable age, right. and who presumably had retired. In each pub. In each pub. Yeah. Because they were sitting around watching Sky Sports on the telly. Right. Sometimes the, this is a Monday, so mm. it was the Everton game from the day before, oh, you okay. know, Everton, Leicester, something like that, watching right. a rerun of that. Yeah. Happily drinking beer. Yeah. Looking at the racing pages of newspapers. Mm-hmm. Chatting amongst themselves. Yeah. And it was like a club. Right. In each so the, they all knew each other. They all knew each other. Yeah. So this, and we felt like a little bit like outsiders. Mm. You know what I mean? Sure. But what I'm saying is, you take a town like Chester, which is you know a smallish town. Mm. It's uh, it's it's a traditional, I don't know, sort of county town. You know, for sure. for, for Cheshire, and. In each pub we went into, there were a group of regulars who had clearly been there since opening time, which yeah. I think is about half past ten these days, right. right? And this was about midday, I suppose, you know, before lunch. And I could honestly imagine that's what they did every day. Mm. And they seemed perfectly happy doing it. Probably. They seemed perfectly happy in each other's company. Yeah. They really did, you know, right. and there's a little sort and of there'll group. Be, there'll be yeah. some that have got a bit of money that can do yeah. a bit of that, maybe play golf once in a while. Yes. Um, and that, but mm. I think they're the lucky ones. I think they're the unusual they ones because I think yeah. there'll be others. Particularly if you don't live in a town. Yeah. If you live, say, somewhere where the where the communications are not that good. Yeah. Where there is, I mean, public transport, as you know, mm. in in parts of the country is not Dreadful. good at all. I mean, certainly down in Sussex, where I mean, there's mm. about two bu- two buses a, a day. Right. You know, that yeah, go yeah. into the sort of the main town. Yes. And then there's you know there's no transport links at all. No. You haven't got a car. No. And a lot of people live on their own. Yeah. They don't see anyone. Yeah. And the and the other sad. Uh, prospect is of living somewhere which is quite, not quite as nice as Chester, if you see mm, what I mean, sure. and not really wanting to go out because right. there isn't anything to go out for. Or you might be in a bad area yeah, where there's crime like and that, stuff and, like that. And, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's something which you'll never be able to tell young people to do. No. Prepare for your old age because yeah. it's too far away. And also a lot of people find it difficult mm. having worked all their lives yes. that nobody needs them anymore. Yes, that's right. And that nobody's actually bothering to, to ask them anything. Well, and that's why you end up with some of them going to work in places like B&Q. Exactly. Because they want people to come up to them and they want to be important. Well, they don't want to be important. They want to be involved and, and, and they want to be a, a piece of life. Now, do you remember that great film Jack Nicholson was in? Was it about Schmidt? Um, about Schmidt, yes. Yeah, that's right. Or As Good As It Gets. No, it was about Schmidt. About Schmidt, about yes. Schmidt. And this is the one where he retired, mm. right, 
But then he found within a few days exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. What's the point of getting up in the morning, yeah. you know, if you haven't got a job to go to? Right. So he actually went back to his old offices and for the first hour he was treated with a bit of respect. Mm. You know, I, Jack, for yeah, instance, yeah. you know, how are you? Know. Right. But then he found a man at one third of his age sitting in the desk that used to be his. And he said, look, I could pop in any time and help you. He said, no, 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 we don't need any help. Yeah. No, thank you. And eventually they pushed him out, you right. know, and said, look, just don't just bother. get lost. Yeah. yeah, get lost and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Found himself completely unwanted and useless and uh, and then had to find things to do in life, particularly after his wife died. Yeah. And uh, and he he didn't know how to look after himself no. in a domestic situation. No, and there's a lot of guys like that. That's right. And a lot of women right. um, who have looked after yeah. men all their lives, and the men are suddenly yeah. lost. But of course, I will never be like that. I'm completely and totally yes. self-supporting. Well, you don't have to be self-supporting yeah. because you can always get out of the fish and chip shop. You can always out of weather spoons. Well, you that's self-supporting. Yeah, that yeah, is self-supporting. Absolutely, it's that's fine. what I'm saying. But you know, perfectly educated and supportive. But if your you know housekeeper I mean? wasn't around, you yeah. know, would you be able to do all the things that she does? Well, I'd get another housekeeper. I wouldn't do all the things well, you see, well, then you're one of the lucky few you know no i've planned my life properly I you see. know and uh if you if you've got if you plan it properly you didn't plan you it that nothing, well because you nearly died due to acute heart failure yeah but i had nothing to do with that i couldn't do anything about that no, I know, it just the, happened but the point is is that no matter how well you plan yeah. things something like that can happen well you could get knocked down by a bus you could right but, you know but, you if know. you look in both directions generally yeah. speaking you yeah. won't get knocked down by a bus well sometimes if you're bladderated you forget to look in one direction well, that's another problem it is yeah this is talk sport yeah as your TV reviewer, I can reveal yeah. there are no plans for a new series. Yeah, no, but it wasn't there a previous series. Oh, hang on, wait a minute, it says here there might be a new series. <laughs> What's the problem? That music can only mean one thing. It is, of course, that time of the week yeah. where uh, Porky Vision uh, kicks in and uh, Mr Parry will tell us all about the shows he's been watching, yeah. uh, what you should be watching, what you shouldn't be watching, Indeed. what he likes and what he doesn't like. Yes. Uh, so what have you got for us this week? Well, Broadchurch mm. is becoming amazing. Is it? Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah. I mean, listen, Line of Duty is becoming amazing, all right. but in a different sort of way. Um, but Funnily enough, when I was in Dorset yes. this week, I had one of my favourite tweets from someone I don't know right. who said, since you're down in Dorset, yeah. are you one of the suspects in Broadchurch like everyone well, else? Exactly, you could be, yeah, you could be, yeah. yeah. And Vera, by the way, do you know that Vera is yeah. played by a, an actress who is 70 years of age, Brenda Blethyn? Brenda Blethyn. Blethyn, yeah. Who is actually 50 years of age in the series. Is she? Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, you know what I think about that series this time around? Yeah. I think they've done something funny to her hair. Right. Her hair looks a lot more quaffed. She looks a lot sort of more curmudgeonly and old to me than she ever yeah, did. Yeah, but you I know. mean, her hair sort of doesn't suit her characters. Yeah. It looks a bit yeah. too well put together, if you okay. know what I mean. Well, she, she's, you know, investigating all these murders, driving around in this Jeep yeah. that you wanted, you know. Well, no, it's a no, Land, it's a Land, Land Rover, Rover, actually. She's got yeah. a Land Rover Defender. That's right, all over Northumberland. Yeah. Uh, one of those. Well, this kind of stuff. Well, no, they're, they're a farm vehicle, basically. Well, aren't I they? mean, a lot of people like them. They're, they're very yeah. trendy. Yeah. Well, are they? Yeah. But they've stopped making them now. Yeah, they have stopped making mm. them, yeah. Bob McGowan used to have one, you know, used yes. to work for us on the Express. Did, you know, the Olympic the, Flame, they call The him. Olympic Flame, he never went out. <laughs> now, uh, now, Broadchurch, right? Yes. Now, what's happening here is, I mean, this is getting serious, because, of course, it's all based on a fact that they've put together pieces of a jigsaw to reveal there's a serial rapist around, mm. you know, mm. over the space of the last two or three years. Yes. And this is only because, uh, you know, women have come forward to reveal these terrible attacks that have happened to them after previously not speaking about them. Yes. Now, Julie Hesmondula... Hesmondula. Yeah. It's my favourite, Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she's the woman who used to be Haley in Coronation Street. OK. She's... Haley Hesmondula. Eh? Hey? No, no, Julie Hesmondula is the actress's oh, name. Oh, sorry. She was Haley Cropper in... Cropper? Uh, yeah, in uh, Coronation Street. Did she ever come at Cropper? Yeah, she died of cancer as a... As a, as a, as a, as a Did she? As a character, yes, oh, right. yeah, but she's still okay. alive, obviously, as mm. usually has Mondula, or else she wouldn't be in Broadchurch, would she, you know? <laughs> right, so um, so anyway, she, I don't know why you find this so funny. So um, anyway, yeah. so she is the central character because it was when she reported the terrible attack on her yes. that it all took off. Yes. Now, what's been revealed since then is a series of Rogerisation um, goings on, yes. which are truly shocking. So, for instance... And that nobody knew about. Nobody knew about yeah. this here in this small community called, what's it called, West Beach or something? Uh, West Bay. West Bay, that's right. Well, that's right, what yeah. it's really called. Yeah, that's right, but it's called Broadchurch. Now, so what happens is she uh, goes to this party and gets terribly attacked yeah. by somebody. Right. But she's had to admit, because of DNA tests, 
that that morning mm. she actually had, you know, a bit of old rumpy pumpy yeah. with a, a bloke uh, on the morning of this 50th birthday party. Yeah. And then had to reveal to her best friend that it was her best friend's husband yes. that she was romping with. And that didn't go well, did it? Didn't go well. Except that the wife, you know, who's been cuckolded, the one who said to her, why would anybody rape you? Yes. Suggesting she's too ugly to be yes. raped, you know, which is a terrible which thing. Which is a terrible thing to say. Terrible thing to say. Yeah. Uh, now seems to have forgiven her husband, right, and said, I tell you, why don't we move away? You know, I'm, I hate all this, right? And and then has now forgiven Julia Hesmondula, but now that guy turns out to be a sex maniac because oh, yeah. he had he had sex with uh, Julia Hesmondula in the morning yeah. of the party. This is the woman's husband. The woman's husband, yeah. and the woman was the woman whose party it was. It was a fiftieth birthday party right. for her. All oh, right. Yeah. So he spent the afternoon organising her party. Yeah. And then at five o'clock, mm. got in his car, drove to a chemist, yeah. bought a packet of condoms oh, yeah. and came back mm. because he thought he'd caught the eye of one of the waitresses and he was right. right. And he took her to the woods behind the... Well, this is before the party. This is before the party. Fine. Took her uh, into the woods behind yeah. the house where the party was taking place yes. and had sex with her against a tree. Against a tree? Against a tree, yeah. How yeah, yeah. do you know it was against a tree? Because he said, he told the police it was against the tree. Oh, right, okay. Right, okay. okay. And what sort of tree was it? Well, I don't know what sort of tree it was, you idiot. Well, it's important. It, it matters. Well, it might do. So, so now you've got a situation, mm. got a situation, right, where the lodgerisation aspect... So is he saying, therefore, he couldn't be capable of doing whatever it was later? No, not at all. Worn out. Not at all. Right. Not at all. It looks like he is a sex maniac. Right. Who, sex you know, maniac. who likes having sex all the time. Yeah. You know, with anybody. Doesn't make him a bad person. Doesn't make him a bad person. But then again, you know, those sort of people, obviously, are of interest to the police. Yeah, you If be there careful. is a mad serial rapist on the loose. You know what I mean? Because you'd say, ah, oh, that sort of activity yes. is similar. Indeed. You know? So, uh, well, all right. Yeah, so he's... Um, so he's a suspect. He's a suspect. Yeah. And... Uh, I was reading something the other day where yeah. people were saying, why are people complaining that all these people are suspects? I mean, that's the way the shows are supposed to be done. Yeah, yeah, they're all You're suspects. You're not supposed to find out no. now. You find out at the end. You find out at the end. That's yeah. absolutely right, yeah. Mm. But that will all come to a conclusion. Yeah. So that's all, you know, very interesting. There's also, like, a, a weirdo taxi driver who's a, sub, uh, who's a suspect. Yes. And, and Isn't Lenny Henry a suspect as well? Lenny Henry's a suspect, and Lenny Henry is like gone a bit off his rocker, yeah. the character, because he goes around beating people up mm. if he thinks they've been bad to Julie has yes. right. Uh And he did beat up the guy who had sex against the tree with the waitress. Yeah, because not he had because sex. of the tree though. Or no, the waitress. No, because he had sex with Julie Hesmondula. Hesmondula, yeah. And the other thing is, the other thing is, is that Julie Hesmondula has got an exiled husband. Exiled. Yeah. Where? Well, I mean, I mean they've like parted say, like and he, and he lives somewhere something. else. But he's, uh, what he's done is, right. Well, he's not living in the, t- in the town, is he? Yeah, he's living in the town, is yeah. He? Yeah, but he's living in a separate place to Julie Hasmondula. Okay. He's living somewhere else. But he managed to get installed on his computer. Now, this is very dangerous, this. You know yeah. your laptop computer? Have you yeah. got a laptop? I no? have, yeah. You have a laptop, yeah. Mm. Do you know if it's, it's probably got a camera in it? So uh, you can, I think it has, yeah. So you can Skype? Yeah. Do you know that people completely randomly yeah. can install software on that so that people can watch you as you're at your computer without uh, you knowing? Yes, I did know that. Yeah. Did you know that? Mm. Well, that's what he did yeah. to Julia Hasmondula. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. See? Now, so Very that's... Tricky, uh, that. That's all pretty interesting. It's called like a worm or something, isn't it? Is it? Isn't it called a worm? A worm. Or it's, uh, some kind of trojan. A wire? Is it called a wire? No, no, no. It's like they like can put things into your... Into your yes. They can put a virus, basically, into your computer. Yes. Where they can, they can find out what you're typing, that they can get your keystrokes. But this actually looks at you. This, you yeah, well, it's no, actually it's just, looking at well, you. Well, it's just yeah. accessing the camera. <laughs> accessing the camera. It's not actually right, looking yeah. at you. Right, so there's all of that going on, right? <laughs> hey, what's the problem? It's not actually looking at you. It's just no, using, it the, it's it using the camera. Yeah, but somebody else, if, they, if they're keying into your computer, can yeah. follow your movements around the room. Yes. Yes, see? So I knew that. So that's going on. Now then, in line of duty, yeah. this is quite amazing. Is it? It's quite amazing because I've been trying to figure out right from the start why the chief cop in the case is... What are you, I thought you were laughing then. For no, a I wasn't. No, no, I was just breathing I, in. I see. The chief cop in the case yeah. is being investigated by the anti-corruption squad within the police force itself. Yes. Uh, because she seems like, you know, like a really good cop, except that she's 
murdered um, a forensic Oh, yes, you told me this. Yes, she kills the guy, right? Then and, and, and cuts his fingers off. Cuts his fingers off, yeah. disguises the fact that she's killed him. Yes, that's and right. And yet you describe her as a good cop. Well, there's something really weird going on because what we think might be the case now is she might not be a killer at all. She might be defending her husband, who is a, a killer, a oh, maniac. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Another maniac. Another maniac. Another sex maniac. Uh, well, the point is, she's in bed with her husband the other night. Right. He gets all amorous, right? Uh, you know, Rogerization is in the air, so to speak. And she says... What are you laughing at? Uh, well, just because of yeah, the words. Yeah, she says, oh, I'm a bit tired tonight, darling. He says, OK, OK. Well, I've right. just been mur- murdering someone. Well, we're not sure if he has. But, you see, what happens is the anti-corruption cop, who's a really good guy... Yeah. Oh, by the way, the the the, the chap playing the um, potential serial killer maniac husband of the good cop... Of the good cop yeah. who's murdered the guy. Well, we don't know, but we think he might have done. But his name's Lee Ingleby. Right. He That's the actor, Lee Ingleby. Lee Ingleby. Who was brilliant yeah. in Inspector... Inspector Clouseau? No, no, no. Um, what's his name, isn't it? Martin Shaw. Uh-huh. Inspector George... George Gently. Um, Gently. Inspector George Gently, right? Did you see George that? George Gently. No, I didn't like that. Oh, uh, Geordie. No, I didn't oh, like that. Geordie, lads. Because you it know. was one of those, those old things. Aye. It's too old. 1950s, yeah, man. it's too old. I'm not sure it's in the 50s. A Lee Ingleby, you know, he was a 1960s copper yeah. in a northeastern county not Durham. Not interested. No, well, I didn't he's, like it. Well, he's the husband. Right. Except he's now a high-powered lawyer. Is he? But the anti-corruption cop yeah. goes to I'm him. i hard to keep up. No, 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 no. Don't worry. It's easy to follow. <laughs> The anti-corruption cop goes to him and his Swiss officers yeah. and says, uh, I need to uh, trace your wife's movements, his wife being yeah. the chief inspector high-flying female well, cop. Well, just put a camera into a computer. No, that's that's a different program. That's that Broadchurch. Sh- oh, right. That's Broadchurch. This okay. is line of duty, yeah. right? And uh, and he says, where, you know, where was your wife, you know, like four nights ago when this yeah. murder took place? Oh, yeah. And he says, mm. um, I can't answer any of your questions. I'm mm. sorry. I'm I'm not a criminal lawyer and all that. So he doesn't know where she was. Well, we're not sure whether he doesn't know where she was or she doesn't know where he was. Anyway, oh. he goes back to the offices yeah. of this guy. Mm. And guess what happens? He kills him. As he gets out the lift, yeah. this is the this is the anti-corruption cop yeah. who's a central figure to this uh, yeah. show, yeah. and therefore nobody can imagine he can be killed before the last episode. Yeah, is suddenly confronted by a man in a balaclava with a baseball bat oh. who beats him to death and throws him over the stairs. Oh God! And yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, is it nearly uh, the end now? Well, no. This is the whole point, you see. This is interesting. Right. So we don't know whether he's dead or not, but he looks very dead. He went yeah. down about four flights. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? cut his fingers off. No, nobody's cut his it's fingers not off her, yet. Is it? It's not her. She's not like a serial killer. Well, kid. we don't know. I don't know. It was a very vicious attack, yeah. you know. And, it's, could it be a woman that did it? Doubt it, because there was quite a struggle physically, oh, yeah. you know, in the corridor mm. before he hurled him over the stairs yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Right. OK. But uh, it's very interesting. Okay. It's absolutely Sounds fascinating. Sounds good, actually. I'll have to try and look it, at it. It is brilliant. But is it not on at the same time as something else? Probably. But, I mean, you know, you've got to tell these these days you can record up to five programmes at the same time. It's BBC, isn't it? It's a line of duty. Probably. So I think I'll get it on the iPlayer. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure right. you will. I'm sure you will. OK. Worth so, watching. All right. Worth watching. So that's okay. worth watching. That's, yeah. the, that's the porky vision for this week. And I think that was one of the most comprehensive porky Visions we've had for a long time. I think it probably was. Yeah, I think it was. Gave yeah. away quite a lot. Oh, but, uh, yes. Thank yes. you very much indeed. No More problem. Of the same. No problem. Next week. Yes. Sport. We are the two mics coming up on the show tomorrow, of course. Tim Vickery is going to be joining us, and uh, it will be Porky Quiz time uh, from the box of Trivial yes, Pursuit. Yes, that's uh, right. You have to bring that in, by the way, don't you? The I know where it box. is. I keep it safe, don't worry. Well, how do I know that you haven't gerrymandered the question? Well, how then? could I? There's thousands of them, so I couldn't possibly. Well, there's the way, there will be a way of doing it. No. If, you're, if, you're in cust- if you are in control of the game... I'm not. I'm not. I well, have where a, is it, then? It's kept by uh, an official of this company. An official? Yes. Not the independent quiz masters? No, no, they have nothing to do with it. Mm. No, no, no. no uh, Anthony says nothing. this, I've never heard a more rambling babble of confusion spouted by anyone trying to explain the latest episode of Line of Duty. I'm sorry, but then, you know, you're not paying attention. It's but a very complicated says, plot and I had to work it out forensically. Yeah, Anthony also says that it clashes with my Sunday 9pm viewing of Homeland, which is true. 
through. That's why I haven't seen it. Yes, it does. But I'm I'm reading some of the reviews myself on no. Homeland and reviewing some myself, and I'm told it's a it's a disappointing follow up series. No, I wouldn't say that. You don't I'd think say so? It's pretty good. I, say, although I missed it on Sunday. Right. Uh, I think didn't I? Right. Yeah, I did miss it on Sunday. Yes, because we were in Dorset. Dorset. So we didn't see it. Don't they have televisions in Dorset? Uh, they do, but mm. we were otherwise engaged because oh, we, we were having a sort of uh, what you might describe as a social evening. A social evening. Uh, Andy says how to yeah. pronounce Julie Hesmond Yeah, here you go. Yeah. He sent you a YouTube clip. Yes. A YouTube clip? A YouTube clip which suggests that you're not pronouncing it right. Oh uh, well, you know, I don't take in any Julie much attention. Julie Hesmond. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, people don't have to pronounce Edinburgh properly, do they? Call it Edinburgh. And, well, it's uh, not quite so difficult, is it? You know. uh, here we it's go. It's Hesmond Hall, isn't it? Hey, Isn't it Hesmond Hall? Uh, I've got it right, don't worry. Like, there's one here, it it's says... Hesmondula. MG, how dare you? Uh, sorry, how dare you diss Inspector George Gently, played by a true professional oh, yeah. like Doyle? Uh, Martin well, Shaw was... Well, he was, he was Doyle in Bodie and Doyle, a professional. Oh, yeah, that's right. Bodie was the other guy with the yeah, dark Bodie hair. Yeah, Bodie and Doyle, yeah. He's dead, isn't well, he? Well, I like the... Eh? Bodie's dead. Is he? Yeah, he, he, he moved to California, never got What's any work again. in real again. life? In real life. Oh, no, right. Never got any work again after oh. the professionals. Okay. Got, got rather bitter and then died. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not very nice of you. Well, I, um, no, I'm sorry. Gav says this. How can one man get TV so wrong? Chief Inspector, can we have Porky Vision with the volume on next week, mm-hmm. please? What do you mean? I thought it was on this week. What do you mean? I d- uh, sorry, he says, how can I get some things wrong and then doesn't point out anything wrong, does well, he? Uh, well, I think he means that maybe you need to put the volume on when you're watching it. I do put the volume on, of course, yeah. Oh, OK. And he says t- you've got something wrong, like Chief Inspector. She, that's, the, that's the chief woman cop. She's the chief inspector. Is it? OK. Yes. All right. Yes. Um, and David says, can we have some more uh, Mike Perry stories on his chair? I need some sleep and I've got to work at 7.30. Yeah. Uh, well, the chair's Hashtag, back in... Uh, £1,000 back pound in chair. Uh, actually, um, I'm having a bit of a rough time domestically with the repairs because I'm having a new um, waste disposal fitted. Waste disposal? This morning, yes. Oh, super. Yes. yes. Yeah, because you told me it didn't work. That's right. It's, so it how much up. is that going to set you back then? About £400. For a waste disposal? Well, to have it fitted and everything yeah. as well, yes. Yes. Mm, yeah. Yeah, this is one thing after another at your place. Well, it no, it's not. Like you need to move. No, not at all. It's uh, it's it's called staying ahead of the game. You know, it's renovationary, uh, which I always get in before they get me, so to speak. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, what's the life of a waste disposal these days? Well, this one was fitted about ten years ago. Okay, so that's about right. So I it's think. like a washing machine almost. Yeah, I suppose you have so. To replace I suppose it every so. Sort of yeah. five or ten years. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, mm. yeah. And how long? Well, that's going to be noisy, isn't it? The guys going to be in your flat for ages. No, they say they can do it in half an hour. Really? It's taking out one unit, put another unit in, simple and will they as that. Take, and will they take it away completely, or will they just dump it somewhere? No, no, take it away and dispose of it mm. properly. All you right. know, no problem at all. Well, let's hope so. It's very easy. Yeah. It's quite complicated. It's all connected to the dishwasher, the washing machine, the sink, and the uh, waste disposal are all interconnected. Yes. So you have to be careful about you get all the pipes in the right place. I'm sure, absolutely. Otherwise, right. water comes up your plug hole instead of going down. David in Knott's be a real problem. says this. Good morning, lads. I'm just listening to Porky Vision. I'd yeah. like to ask what, where, why. I am flummoxed. Yeah, well, you should have listened more carefully and paid attention, and then you'd know what was happening, wouldn't you? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's one from William who says, I don't know if you listened last week, Bill. He sent this to Bill who was asking about uh, Porky Vision. Yes. Uh, but last week we had orgies, torture and human sacrifices. Yeah. Hashtag Caligula. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Now then, um, your vision or dream of flying cars is getting closer. It's not my vision. It says flying... You're the one that keeps telling me there's going to be flying cars. Flying cars will be sold to the public by the end of this year under plans for the, fir- the world's first mass market vehicle capable of taking to the skies from the road. Oh, yeah. Aeromobil, who are a company based in... Aeromobil, uh, Mobile, Alabama. No, Slovakia. Well, why right. would I know that? Based, well, it's just unusual. We've never come across an international company from Slovakia before, Well, there we? must be loads. Uh, anyway, it says here, Aeromobil, Slovakian company, will unveil a flying car next week, insisting that the design will be available to order during 2017. With no disrespect to Slovakia... If yep. I'm going to buy the first world, mm. world's first flying, flying car, car yeah. I don't think I want it made in Slovakia. Well, that's, a, that's an insult to Slovakia, <laughs> and uh, it's not becoming of this show. Well, all I'm saying is is that, uh, you know, if I was buying a yep. flying car yep. and it was being made by Google or somebody, or mm. it was being made by Microsoft or mm. Apple, mm. You know, I'd be probably more likely to buy it than one made in Slovakia. I mean, that's very nationalist, that, Why? isn't it? Eh? Not at all. It really is. Not anyway, at all. it says, the vehicle, a four-wheeled car with retractable wings... Yeah 
would put an end to congestion by allowing motorists to use the road or sky, d- depending on traffic conditions. Well, you can't just use the sky, can you? Well, I mean, that's just not going to work. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. No. That's what will happen in 30 years' time. No. You see, you just see cars flying over motorways. No, it will have of... to be... Yeah, but you'll have to control the airway. Well, of course you? you will. You'll have to have regulatory well, you know, gonna... air channels. Well, who's going to run that? Well, a, a, a body that runs... Look, we have... You, if you'd have said to me 150 years ago, oh, who's going to control all these flying machines that go in and out of airports? <laughs> Air traffic control, yeah, OK? Yeah, that's different from a load of cars on a, on a motorway. It's not. You've got to invent a, a body. Anyway, it says, the company which has been working on the concept for more than a decade oh, yeah. has unveiled a number of prototypes. The latest one, dubbed Aeromobile 3, uh-huh. has a flight range of 435 miles, a top speed of 124 miles an hour, and needs 300 metres of road to take off. On land, it can travel up to 99 miles an hour. Right. Aeromobile have released new images of a commercially available model that is due to be officially launched at the Top Marks Monaco supercar show on April the 20th. Right. Hundreds of improvements have been made compared with the previous model, which was released two and a half years ago. The company said it aims to make transportation vastly more efficient and environmentally friendly by allowing significantly faster travel for medium-distance trips and in areas with limited road infrastructure. So is that going to be... I'm now going to show you two pictures okay. of the flying car. Is that going to be, um, do you think, a, a drivable or testable at this uh, show that it's going to be? Well, at? I would imagine. Hmm. But, I mean, the concept has to yeah, be... They're going to unveil it next week. Yeah. The concept has to be available. It's, we've got the technology, for want of a better word, Yeah, but we? it doesn't really look to me like a flying car. It looks like a, pl- a car that somebody's put wings on. It, it has a retractable wing. Yeah. But it yeah. doesn't look doesn't look like I mean it's not like I mean as I said to you yeah I want to see you know, the sort of mm. Back to the Future type car yeah. I want to see a DeLorean or a similar type well, car. Well, DeLorean couldn't fly. No, I know that. The DeLorean know. was a was a, a time I know machine. It, yeah, I know it couldn't fly. Well, it, but it, but yeah. it, when it when it went to the future mm. and all the cars were flying around yeah. like they were in the Fifth Element. Yes. you know they were little yes. mini cars and cabs. They were mm. not things with great big wings coming off. Mm. Mm. You know they were powered by thrusters, for yeah. want of a better word. Well, to me, it looks like a great plan, a great idea. No, not to me. I it want to find like... out how much they cost and get one. You would not want to get one of those. Uh, I found out the other day, by the way, in one mm. of my medical journals, yeah. that the world's first heart pump is about to be installed heart in somebody's pump. chest. Yeah, right. And what will that do? It, it will replace the heart. What, completely? Yeah, and I've, really? t- I've said that this can't be far off because mm. the heart's such a simple mechanism. It's yeah. a pump. It just goes in and out and pushes blood around your body. Yes. So you must be able to well, simulate must, that. must do more than that, mustn't it? Well, that's basically what it does. does it doesn't it? clean the blood. No, it doesn't, doesn't purify the blood. No. It just put, it, it takes it in one chamber right. and pushes it out the other. But it, but, it needs, but it needs to do it quite a force, doesn't it? Because if you've got, yeah. say, the reduced uh, capacity yes. in your heart valve, yes. it doesn't pump it sufficiently. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, we must be able to do it. It's well within yeah. the capability of modern technology. But maybe it can't. What it can't do, perhaps, mm. is, is pump at a, di- a different rate because it has to pump at different rates, doesn't it? Depending on uh, exercise and yeah. all that kind depending of stuff. Depending on exercise, well, depending on the, well, you know, the heartbeats and all the rest of I've it. I've told you before, and you didn't believe, but now you do. The, the, the people who are unfortunately incapacitated in wheelchairs and that can now just think their brains with a special sort of cap on their head. Yes. They can think their brains to do things they couldn't previously they can. do. They can. But so I don't you think... must be able to transfer that to think... an artificial heart But as I well. don't think they can make their heart beat faster or yeah. slower, yeah. depending on the need for that to happen. I'm sure that that can be sorted out. Anyway, the good news is mm. this pump, which I've seen, you know, uh, written about. So you're going to get a fly car and a pump. Well, the pump is 85 grand. Right. Now, I think that's a bargain yeah. for a new well, if heart. Well, if it saves your life. Because, I mean, if you went to America and said, can I have a heart off the shelf, yeah. which you can do, apparently, mm. it would cost you a million dollars. Probably. So I've thought about it, and yeah. I thought, well, a million dollars is a bit too much, really. Yeah. Um, but 85 grand may just be for the pump. It is just so for you the have pump. To put, get somebody to put it in. Well, yeah. That's, well, a, I million, mean, that's a million quid. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure that it'll, it'll cost that, but, I mean... You know, it's... well, you'll need to. You can't use the NHS for this, right? So I think you to... can. No, I th- yeah, I think you can. I'm not having that. No, I think no, you can. That's a waste of the NHS. No, I'm saving the NHS no. eighty five grand no, by volunteering not. to buy the pump. No, and then and then no. you know somebody like Doctor Banner or somebody can stick no. it in for me. No, I'm not having that. You have to pay separately to have that done. Why? Because, right. because I've paid my taxes all my life. Doesn't matter. The NHS. That's, you've already cost us a lot more money than you put in. Yeah, well, that's what the NHS is for to no. help those who you know are ailing. Yeah, okay? no, yeah, I know, but you've already used up more than your twice your. Uh, your allowance for the NHS, agree. right? I don't and so agree. what I'm saying is, is that mm. if you want to have some special manoeuvring yes. done, yes. you should pay for it through your note, through I the don't, nose. I don't see why I should. 
You should not get it for free. If I volunteer to buy the pump, then somebody who's got specialist knowledge can mm. put it in. Well, it's like if you bought a new engine, uh, you'd have to get a mechanic to stick it in your car. That's what I'm saying. So, so the mechanic wouldn't cost as much as the engine. Yeah, but if the mechanic is working on lots of other people's mm. cars, yeah. you shouldn't be able to jump to the front of the queue unless you're paying extra. Well, I would pay extra. No, you just said you wouldn't. No, no, no. I, I don't mind paying a bit extra, but I'm not going to pay another 85 grand for a guy to put a pump in my chest. Well, it's, it's, your, it's your life. Heart. It's your life. You, yeah. want to, you want to safeguard your life. Yeah, well. Your, the longevity of your of your existence. Yes. It's got yes. to be worth 170 grand to you, surely. Mm, it could be. It could mm. be. I have to think about it. Depends how old I am when I decide to do it and how long I've got left. <laughs> Well, if you don't, if you die, yeah. and you've got loads more money. What's the difference? Yeah, well, that's leave absolutely it right. To, yeah, yeah. You well, might as well spend it all. It's got to be thought about. A couple You're of flying right. cars, right? Mm, mm. A new heart pump. Yep. You know, who knows where the end would be? Well, don't forget the new waste disposal. And the new waste disposal. Yeah. How much is that? Four hundred. Four hundred quid. Yeah. Well, it's a very expensive week. This is going well, to be. Well, it could be. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, uh, we're going to be back tomorrow um, for the uh, Porky Quiz, of yep. course, and much else besides. Manchester United's game without Wayne Rooney. Uh, going through uh, Anderlecht, live on TalkSport. Uh, we'll be back shortly. <laughs> Did I tell you I saw Spectre over the weekend? Uh, how did you see it? How? Yes. Uh, I downloaded it. You downloaded it? Yeah. Mm, how much did that cost then? Uh, I rented it. I think it was about four quid or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and how long can you keep it for? 48 hours. And then what do you have to